three, two, two, one, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting film journey here on uh, Inside Movies Galore. I am one of your hosts, but uh, uh, tonight we are um, starting a new leaf, as it is February, and we have a couple of birthdays this uh, this month, uh, being Tammy's and Jake's, but we also have a free-for-all cu uh, couple of weeks here, uh, where we... Voted on a couple of movies and they got through. So, uh, so uh, I'm gonna take this over to uh, and give this over to Forrest, as I do believe that. Uh, oh, uh, that uh, this was your pick. So, all right, thank you, Dave. Okay, so this, uh, so this was, uh, so tonight we're going to be discussing Super Mario Brothers from 1993. Uh, this was actually a, this was actually a movie that I had nominated last year for uh, our Mustache March, but uh, it unfortunately didn't make mm -hmm. the cut. Uh, especially and because it got beat out, it got beat out by another Bob Hoskins movie where he does not sport sport uh, a, a pretty kick ass mustache. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's it's Super Mario Brothers from 1993, based on the. Uh, Based on the on the Mario on the popular Super Mario Brothers series of video games from Nintendo, created by Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, directed by by uh, by husband and wife duo Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel, who also created Max Headroom, uh, produced uh, written by uh, written by Parker Bennett, Terry Runte, and Ed Solomon, produced by Jake Eberts and and Roland Joffe. I can a bit and then start and uh got an all-star cast here you've got actually you've got uh bob hoskins as mario mario john leguizamo as luigi mario dennis hopper as king koopa samantha mathis as princess daisy and the queen uh fisher stevens as iggy koopa richard edson as spike koopa fiona shaw as lena mojo nixon as toad uh dana kaminsky as daniela francesca p roberts as big bertha uh Lan uh, and Lance Henriksen as the Mushroom King, uh, with Frank Welker doing the voices of Yoshi and the Goombas, and Homer, him Homer Simpson himself, Dan Castellaneta, narrating the the uh, the prologue. Uh, it was with uh, with cinematography by Dan Dean Semler, edited by Mark Goldblatt, music by Alan Silvestri, and uh, produ and uh, produced and distributed by by Walt Dis by Walt Disney Pictures through Hall through their uh, through their uh, through their Hollywood, through their Hollywood, through Hollywood pictures, uh, the film fall. The film follows two Brooklyn plumbers, Mario and Luigi, who tra who travel to another dimension to rescue a princess from an e from a e from an evil an evil re reptilian tyrant, King Koopa, uh, and and uh, stop him from from taking over the universe. So we'll go around doing we'll go around doing first impressions. Uh, I'll we'll start from my left. Uh, Dave, this is your first time watching Super Mario Bros. And also, uh, I, f I just want to say this is also, you know, because originally, again, we were, I was gonna, I wanted to do this for Mustache March last year. Dave made the cut, but I feel like now is a perfect time to do it since we've got a new Mario movie coming out. This coming out in, I think, two months from now. Uh, and a new Super Mario Bros. movie. And also the 30th, and also 30th, and it's also the 30th anniversary this year. But uh, well, anyway, we'll go. Anyway, we'll uh, start from my left. Dave, first impressions. Is this your first time watching Super Mario Brothers? Um, no, I actually picked it up uh, uh, maybe a couple of uh, uh, months back and uh, watched it for the first time um, uh, when I picked it up because I had not seen it before. Um, but uh, this would be a second time watch. Uh, but. Um, uh, seeing as it was a film that was done in the 90s, I can see why it's got some cult, you know, nostalgia for, uh, for it, because it, it was the uh, the movie that came out for uh, uh, for the game, and you got a couple of uh, a couple of people who are who are well known, like Bob Haskins and John Leguizamo. He was quite young in here. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, oh, and, uh, De uh, definitely was interesting. Um, though the Goombas did not look like Goombas. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not, almost nothing in this movie resembles the games except maybe the Bobombs. <laughs> very, very few things, too. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the film fell short of what, uh, what the game looked like, but it was funny at moments and it was entertaining enough uh, that I kept it in my collection. So. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, over over to you, Brandon. Is this your uh, first impression? Is this your first time watching Super Mario Brothers? Uh, no. <laughs> I was really excited uh, about this one because I was a Nintendo fanboy back in the day. Um, little did I realize what the heck I was getting into uh, when I actually did uh, see this in theaters. <laughs> um, I was slightly disappointed in what I saw when I saw it at first. But you got to understand that uh, expectations being what they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, when I watch it, I appreciate it for the, the perfect piece of camp that it is. And uh, I like movies like this, so it sticks with me now more than it did back then. And then, of course, learning a lot of the... Uh, other fun ones. Um, uh, other fun facts from behind the scenes, like uh, Bob Hoskins being drunk. Drunk, yes. the part of it. That just uh, that just won yeah. me over completely. So I yeah. love I love a dumpster fire, and uh, this one was the perfect dumpster fire. So I cannot get enough of that. <laughs> yeah, this was a notoriously troubled production. That uh, yeah, Bob Hoskins admitted he was. Yeah. That he was drunk and he would and he and John Leguizamo would get drunk with him, um, and, and apparently they butted heads a lot with the directors. <laughs> oh, and after seeing uh, Leguizamo in uh, the Pest, um, I am uh, I am now convinced oh, that uh, that uh, that this part and that part are related. <laughs> <laughs> which well, funny enough, I, 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 which funny enough, both those were two of my favorite. These were two of my favorite movies as a kid, and I don't know. Legos almost has seemed to have an eye for uh, critically derided for uh, critically derided comedies back then. Although he, I will say, I, I've seen him, in, I've seen him perform live, and he's a great stand-up. Uh, over to you, Jake. Uh, first impression: This is your first time seeing Super Mario Brothers. But of course, Legazamo's had an interesting career since then, up to and including this year's Versus Award contender, Violent Night. Uh, oh, yeah. where he's much older in that production. Yeah. <laughs> he's a kid in this one. <laughs> no. <it's> like... <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> no, this was not a first-time watch for me. Um, I suppose if you think about it, there are films that probably each of us could cite a couple of films that could be considered a sort of rite of passage and that you, you go into certain films really excited and really, really, you cannot wait to see the movie only to learn that in in life things often do not go as you hope and this film was one of the first ones to teach me that lesson <laughs> um i of course i was not i wouldn't necessarily you don't say I get what you want i won't say i was necessarily a full on nintendo fanboy uh, and of course, I've never been that guy that has all the games, you know, like, uh, I've never had very many 
systems that I, because I, I, I like video gaming, but it, I've never wanted to let it dominate. And video games are such a time suck. They really can dominate your life. Mm-hmm. And also, my parents just didn't want to spring you for uh, all of these games. So I had friends who had Atari. I had friends who had Nintendo and Nintendo uh, and, and a couple of these other systems. But I think the first system we had at the house was a Super Nintendo. And yes, I think at the time it came with Super Mario Brothers 3, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, Super Mario World. Mario World, you're right. But Mario Brothers 3 was one that I was familiar with by this point in time. Uh that I had played some, hey Dustin, I had played some of the original, I think, and some of Mario 2, but only a little. Really, Mario 3 and Super Mario World, those were the ones that really got me into the... the and and we used to watch that show that was on in the... The cartoon? The butt ass crack of dawn in the morning. The oh, Super dear God. Oh, with, Captain Lou Albon- with Captain Lou Albano as Mario. <laughs> and uh, so I... We we loved Mario and we 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 were excited when they said there was going to be a movie especially cuz I think this was like the first major American production of a video game movie or something along those lines. I believe so. It was the first it was the first live action right. uh uh film based on a video game. Right. And so I had not yet uh been disappointed by Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I had not yet been thoroughly disillusioned by Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I still have not seen Street Fighter. Um, I So this one for me was like, I went into it. You know, I, I was a big it fan of like, uh, Bob Hoskins from like Mortal Kombat. I no he is such a great character. Uh, I went into this going, okay, this is going to be good. And... Uh, I was surprised and disappointed and let down and pretty much hated the first movie the first time I saw it. And then over the years, I've kind of, you know, you guys are partly to blame for my increasing interest in, as Brandon said it, dumpster fires. (laughs) Uh, And well, he probably more than most, I have developed an appreciation for bad films. And I've been gr- increasingly curious. And 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 one thing to note: this film is coming up on its 30th anniversary. Uh, it's about four months away, three months away yep. from its 30th anniversary. So it seems like as good a time as any. And and as as was pointed out, there's the new Mario movie coming up. And um, while this one very amusingly did not make the cut for a mustache matinee. That was my theme, and so this being my birthday month, uh, we do have, uh, I think Holy Grail has a couple of pretty crazy mustaches. Yep. So, um, the, in, I believe First Night does, doesn't it? I think? Uh, not that I recall. I don't, I don't remember. I'd have to think. I don't think Miller's Crossing well, has very many. But anyway. Well, there's a mustache as a part of Sean Connery's beard. <laughs> So at any rate, um, this was my first time seeing the movie in close to 30 years, probably oh, 28 years if I had to guess. And um, I, it is a hot mess. It, the, it, I've read a lot about the background and the, the, the production issues and how apparently the directors weren't even barely even speaking to each other, let alone anyone else involved in the film. And it's, uh, you had basically the directors fighting the studio, the everyone else is caught in the crossfire. And again, most of them got drunk to, 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 to cope. Um, (laughs) Hoskins and Leguizamo apparently were both injured for much of the film. Um, it's, it was a hot mess, but I will admit watching it, if you don't even pretend for a moment that it's actually based on the video game, (laughs) it's actually not a bad, well, it is a bad movie, but it's kind of fun. 
It's it was interesting enough to watch. It was entertaining enough. It actually had some pretty good one liners. Uh, there were some Easter eggs that made me smile, and a couple that kind of made me laugh a little. I did love the little bit bombs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it uh, and and Dennis Hopper uh, actually does give a memorable performance, and Bob Hoskins does give a memorable performance. Uh, and Samantha Mathis was just pretty fine looking in this one. So, you know, there was some good stuff going on. Uh, the music balance of S3 was good. Um, a couple of the songs were not so good. So, oh, you know, yeah. it's definitely a mixed bag. And But coming to it with severely reduced expectations, yeah. It's, it's it's not a bad it, it, not a bad way to kill a couple hours and uh, I will eventually seek this one out for the collection. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you're a shake. Uh, over to you, Kroll. It's your first time watching Super Mario Brothers. First, actually, first impressions. It's your first time watching Super Mario Brothers. Uh, it's not the first time. No, uh, I saw this. Uh, relatively close to when it came out uh, it was not in theaters um so i never had the oh i gotta go see it and and uh disappointment watching it in the theaters um didn't have the dis i did have the uh oh i want to see it and the disappointment of watching it just didn't happen in theaters <laughs> i was um gosh uh i was young i was 20 when this came out so um Young, but not young enough to be a kid to really enjoy it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really a huge fan of the movie when it first came out. Um, I mean, I, I did like the choice of Bob Hoskins and, and later uh, um, uh, Luigi. Um, so, so the cast is, is actually pretty damn good. Um, at the time, I had no idea who Luigi was. Um you know, later on, I, I, I got to know him, and he's a great, 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 uh, especially the fast. Absolutely love that movie. That is so hilarious. But um, fast forward years later, um, I was kind of dreading doing the movie because I remember how much, how horrible it was. And so I came in with extremely low expectations and extremely, like, ugh, and actually enjoyed it a lot more. Uh, I, I found myself laughing, um, even right away at, some, at a few things. And uh, even though I did compare it to the game again, uh, <laughs> I just see a, a little bit of similarities and a few things here and there. Uh, not too much. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they did look like Mario and Luigi once they got their shoes on. Um, so there is that, at, at least to a degree. Um, uh, maybe, uh, Luigi's actually a little skinnier in the game, but, you know, I don't think, uh, I don't think they come with, men don't come with that size. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. I mean, I was, I was a Nintendo kid, 100%. I mean, my Atari was my first system, and I got the Nintendo. Once I came in, I was 16. My mother gave me money for Christmas. And I went to New Hampshire, got the system and like three games because there was no tax, so got an extra game out of it. And uh, I had the regular Super Mario Brothers with my Nintendo. Um, I ended up trading up a year later when my dad got the uh, got a Nintendo because he fell in love with it too. But it took him like six months to get one because there was although everywhere. Um, he got the Super Mario Duck Hunt. And the gun, which I wanted, but I couldn't. So we, we traded because we didn't use it. So got the free upgrade on it. Um, but I absolutely love the Super Mario one. Uh, it took me about a year to beat it. It was just, it was every day, go to school and, and play a little after school. And, and it, it was just tough. It's definitely tough. So I've never taken that long to beat a game ever since. Um, but I did finally beat it. Got the secret levels. Um, you know, the water world and stuff. Did basically everything you could possibly do in the game. Um, 
then you know I played Super Mario 2 and absolutely loved it. And 3, um, I actually went up to my father's again and uh, they have been playing Super Mario 3 and for months. And uh, I, I went in and a couple days later I beat it. And uh, they're like, how did you do that? I'm like, well, you know, the coin castle, you just kind of just get up to 100 guys and then, you know, you have like 100 tries. <laughs> so, you know, not that difficult. Um, you know, figured I, I was good at figuring stuff out right away, so yeah, figured that out. And uh, then you know, I played Super Mario World a little, and then uh, I don't know, they kind of tapered off, and I stopped kind of playing Nintendo for a while. Um, I played Wii a little bit, not really, didn't really play any Mario than that either, but uh, I still was a huge fan of Mario for a long time, yeah, even Donkey Kong, which a lot of people don't even remember he was in Donkey Kong, but. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, he started out, he started out as the protagonist of Donkey Kong. Yeah, he was a little guy, uh, you know, saving the little the girl from uh, Donkey Kong, so uh, yeah, <laughs> and then it spun off into his own show, and probably is way bigger than Donkey Kong is. Donkey Kong's pretty big, but yeah, Mario's bigger, but yeah, overall, um, but I did notice, um, after the end of this movie that. This kind of set up for a sequel that obviously never happened. But oh, it's one hundred percent setting up a sequel. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I was I was kind of like you know I kind of would like to see a sequel. Um, so I said that in the chat, and when I was waiting for a sequel, um, I don't think we'll ever get that sequel. But it's kind of a shame because well, since know, neither was, Hoskins or Hopper are with us any longer, yeah. That's, I'm yeah, sorry. they would have to get a different. Coffin. But uh, there, there actually yeah. it was. Although uh, a few years ago, there was a web comic, a web comic uh, based on Parker Bennett's uh, on based on based on uh, apparently there was a a web comic, a sequel web comic based on Parker Bennett's original idea, original plan for the second movie. Man, I'm assuming probably a third movie, make it a trilogy. If I assume that. Um, I'm sure it'd be a full fledged franchise if it had done well, if yeah. it had done well at the bottom. At the but uh, yeah, it was a little disappointing that we will never see that sequel. A sequel that could have been, we can call it that, <laughs> could have been just as bad or maybe worse. I'm not sure, but <laughs> either way, uh, it's mildly entertaining, especially if you go into the mindset of it's going to suck. <laughs> You'll enjoy it a lot more than. Saying, oh, this is going to be awesome and be utterly destroyed. <laughs> so uh, that's my uh, two cents on that. All right, very good. Uh, over to you, Tammy. Is uh, First impressions, this is your first time watching Super Mario Brothers? No, this is like my third time. When it first came out, the guy was going out with him and his best friend. They loved playing this, the Mario video games, you know, and funny thing is his friend's name was John Jacobs and we used to tease him and do the whole John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt thing to him all the time. <laughs> but the two of them, that's, they would play for hours and hours and then they finally let me play and I didn't get anywhere on it. So then I didn't, okay, fine. You guys go back to playing. Cause I, I didn't, I wasn't good at it at all. <laughs> So I remember when the movie came out, yep, they were all completely hyped. They couldn't wait to see this movie, you know? And they didn't know how to feel after the movie. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> they admitted that there was it was fun and there was good parts, but then they kept saying, but this doesn't look like this, and this didn't look like this, and this wasn't like this, you know, and yeah, so they were kind of stuck right in the middle. They didn't know whether to say that they enjoyed it or not, you know, because, you know, all the, all the other people that saw it and all the other people that were fellow, you know, video gamers, you know, it's like, well, do you admit that you even liked it a little bit or don't you, you know? <laughs> But I found it entertaining. I mean, no, I didn't, because I didn't play it that much, I didn't realize 
that the characters didn't look like the characters or anything like that, you know. But I still thought it was a, a fun thing, you know. Like I said, I've, I've seen like three times, so it couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> Usually if I really can't stand something, you're lucky you got me to watch it once. <laughs> but um, I thought it was fun. I want the dinosaur. <laughs> Which one, Yoshi? Yeah, I want to bring him home. <laughs> he, can, he can be my pet. He can be my uh, pet. Him and Frankie ought to get along real well, the turtle. <laughs> Yoshi! <laughs> All right. Uh, very good. Over to you. Oh, uh, over to you, Dustin. Uh, first impressions. This is your first time watching Super Mario Brothers. Well, um, so I've seen this movie a handful of times before. And up until probably 10 years ago, when I really had full access to the internet, I didn't know people thought this movie was bad. <laughs> um, which is saying something about me, I guess. Um, because, like, with the period that this, so I've seen this movie before, of course. Uh, the I think the thing was at the time, um, the game didn't really have a whole lot of a story to it. I think a lot of games were like that, that weren't based on things. Like if it wasn't like Mission Impossible, the game, um, there would just be kind of like a one paragraph, like this is what happens in the game, and that would be your story, uh, due to like the technical limitations of like the NES. So I always kind of appreciated this movie because it's like, okay, you saw, you know, what the minimal platformer of Mario and we're like, okay, I have this whole bizarre dystopian sci-fi thing that I've come up with. And I originally thought it was kind of clever until I found out that the script was being rewritten basically every single day. <laughs> so it's, it's a, this is a hard movie to make out really. Um, but I mean, I, I had always had a positive impression of this movie and I always enjoyed it. Uh, I had a handful of the toys, like I had a Koopa figure. I don't know what happened to it, but, um, I mean, I, I didn't grow up with this like a, as a huge part of my life, but it was something that I was very aware of, um, uh, when it came out and I don't know exactly when I first saw it. Uh, I think it was shortly after it had come out though. But uh, yeah, I, I like this movie, and uh, a lot of people who are like, oh, it's the worst thing of all time, it's like, there are definitely a lot worse movies. I mean, what's here, it makes kind of no sense as a Mario Brothers movie, other than just using their names and like a few name drops, like, uh, but uh, I, I like this one. Uh, so I did notice some more Easter eggs that I had always, that I had missed before on this watch, though. Uh, like Jake was kind of pointing out, uh, there's like a restaurant like Bullet Bills. Yep. Like there's a sign for it in the background. So there were wow. there were things like that, which was nice. And the, the Flomp Corporation <laughs> logo. <laughs> that was uh, those were some good touches, I thought. Uh, and I I thought Yoshi looked kind of accurate too, like what I would imagine Yoshi to look like as yeah, a real animal. I would say as Ooh. a real as a real dinosaur. Yeah, a little more scaly, a little less colorful than what I would have yeah. expected. But yeah, that... oh, I would say he, he, he could have maybe, maybe 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 him a little bigger just so Mario could Mario could ride him. But <laughs> right, yeah. I I don't think Bob Hoskins would have been riding that little creature. <laughs> well, he would have been too hammered. He probably would have been like been so too hammered to ride Yoshi anyway. I heard they were wasted like every day because they were like, "What are we even doing here?" And they were right. It was more. It wasn't like a, I'm a drunk thing. It was like a, I'm fed up with this thing. Yeah. So real they could have uh, they they could have had him ride like a like an electronic bull type thing, um, like <laughs> not as not as rocking, you know, but something like that in CGI Yoshi around him. <laughs> so re yeah. real quick, uh, Dustin, uh, knowing your uh, background and whatever, <clears throat> what's your thoughts on the whole uh, parallel dimension dinosaurs evolving? Like humanoid uh, dinosaurs. I think that idea is really cool. Yeah. I've seen a couple of things do that. Uh, like there was Adventures in Dinosaur City, which somebody shared a poster for a while ago. And, um, oh, it looks like Mo's not here. Because Mo commented on that uh, when I posted it on Facebook. He's like, yeah, I remember this. This was great. And I was like, wow, I thought I was the only person who'd seen Dino Adventures in Dinosaur City. Uh, so it makes me think a little mm -hmm. bit of that. 
And then there's also a, there's a sci-fi movie called Anonymous Rex, which has sort of a similar-ish idea. Like, not fully. It's basic, It's not another dimension. It's just humanoid dinosaurs just live here. Uh, but there's there's been a few pushes with the concept. And I like it as a concept, and I think it I think it actually is the best working thing from the movie in terms of they have they've evolved like in a parallel way. I mean they still they still lay eggs, which is kind of weird. Uh, but it's it kind of tracks the way it's portrayed. And they make a big right. deal about how the alternate dimension is has poorer resources. And so the technology is similar, but a little bit more ramshackle. Like their electricity like isn't very refined. Like the, the equipment like throws off sparks, for example. And so I, I thought that was probably the best part of this movie. And I, I almost like the movie just for that because it's such an interesting idea. So I don't know if they'd look fully human like this, uh, but um, yeah, it, it works for me, I guess, is the short answer uh, to that. So I really appreciate that they did it. All right, very good. Thank you very much, Justin. And uh, for me, uh, not my first time watching it. Um, I did not get a chance to see this in theaters when it came out, but I was kind of excited that there was, but because uh, I, I cuz um, I mean I didn't get in I don't my I didn't even get a video my parent my I didn't even get any video games until like have any uh like my parents wouldn't get me of any video games until I was like 8 years old but I remember going to like you know my you know my uncle had an intent my uncles had Nintendo's um my, and I and uh, like my friends had had Nintendo and Super Nintendo so like I would be so like I would play when when I visited that I would play like when I visited them so I got I got into the games but and then it, eventually I did get a Super Mario a Super Nintendo for Christmas when I was like eight years old, and a, as well as a Game Boy, uh, and I was pre, uh, pre, and, and uh, I was like I was into like I was into Mario, um, and I did get and I did uh, see rent this movie on VHS. Eventually I did get and then uh, my grandmother gave it to gave me the VHS tape for my birthday uh, one year, and I wa like actually yeah I think it was like my eighth birthday or something I, that she eighth or ninth birthday she gave it to me and I just watched it like over and over. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, yeah, it, it didn't resemble the game much, uh, at all, it barely resembled the game, but, but I don't know, at the time I didn't think much of it, um, and not, but I, but I, I was already familiar with Bob Hoskins from Who Framed, as, as Eddie Valiant and Who Framed Roger Rabbit and as, uh, Mr. Smee and Hook, and, uh, for me, this is, I would say Mario, for me, is, is for me, his, uh, Bob Hoskins' be, uh, most notable role after Eddie Valiant, uh, like I think he did. He, like despite being, you know, despite being shit faced, he 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 he, he was a, he was a, a fantastic. He was a great Mario. Um, this was kind of my also my my introduction to John Leguizamo, who, again, yeah, he did. Yeah, it seems like back in the nineties, he got he got cast in a lot of uh, critically derided move, a lot of critically derided comedies. But I but I always thought he was hilarious, um, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, and uh, and I think like yeah, like you, Dustin. I did not know how hated this movie was until I went until I went on, until I went on the internet, encountering the internet. Yeah, like I remember going on IMDb and like seeing this on the bottom one hundred, and uh, just seeing like review after review, seeing how much it sucked. Which I'm like, I was kind of, I'm just kind of surprised. I did eventually get, and then actually about ten years ago, I did get a chance to see this in theaters at, at, at bottom one hundred of worst movies. I <laughs> or yeah it's like yeah back yeah back yeah i it was voted like one like in uh i on imd by, voted one of the worst movies on imdb's bottom 100 bottom 100 <laughs> Which Which is, is, a lot of those movies become cult hits and end up climbing in the rankings like this yeah. one's now i think a four ranking <laughs> yeah i mean there's such there's such unfair like treatment for a lot of films too i mean like bottom like worst 100 i mean 2001 a space odyssey is right there come on like uh <laughs> some would call blasphemy <laughs> yeah i hate that movie. it sucks so much ass. uh yeah that's blasphemy but uh but that does remind me of uh i completely forgot to tell my super NES story um and it's actually really similar to yours forest um like i would only get to play 
uh, the Super NES when I was at my aunt's. It was uh, instead of an uncle. And I, I, for my, I think it was like my fifth or sixth birthday, I got uh, an, NES, an SNES, and it did, it did indeed come with Super Mario World. Oh, really? Mine came with, uh, mine came with, it was a Super Mario World and Super Mario All-Stars combo cartridge. Uh, mine was, that was exactly what I had, except it was two separate cartridges. So Super Mario World was on its own cartridge, and All-Stars was on a separate cartridge. Was it? Were they actually combined like that? Like on, yeah, like yeah, they, yeah. There was a combined yeah at one point. Oh, yeah, minor yeah. releases. Yeah, that's actually that, like that particular. I think that, we got uh, Mario World, and I think Hole in One Golf was the other one to keep. <laughs> yeah, that that one that that All Stars plus Super Mario World is actually a pretty valuable cartridge because it was only sold with, with the, the systems, and yep. uh, so it's a. Uh, Pretty valuable these days. No, uh, yeah, really, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm hold, I'm holding onto that onto that thing as long as I can, as for as long as I can. The the all star <laughs> cartridge or the combo cartridge? The combo cartridge. Okay. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it didn't resemble the game much, but I think yeah, again, Bob Hoskins was excellent. Uh, I think I think the the both Al, Alan Silvestri score and uh, actually I did uh, I know Jake was not too, I, I know you weren't too big on on some of the soundtrack, but I loved the sound I loved the soundtrack for this movie. I mean, George Clinton, Megadeth. Mostly that, uh, what is it they call it? Is it Dinosaur Stomp or whatever? That song's kind of stupid. But... Walk the Dinosaur. That, that yeah. George Clinton did a cover of it for this movie, which I'll admit, oh. I, I, I was listening to, I was, I've been listening to it to get ready for this <laughs> of the, uh, discussion. Um, okay. And I was almost ready to it. Awesome and I was with the music, you know, awesome the music video for the song. Awesome the song. Chat. Most of the yeah. soundtrack was memorable. That kind of like a proto meme. Uh, uh, like somebody just thought the chorus was so funny, and they would just like play it on loop. And occasionally, in a conversation, they'd be like, "Hey, hey," and we'd be like, "What?" Everybody walk the dinosaur. It was like, "Yeah, here it goes. calm down." Whenever I think about I, uh, this movie, I, and you mention Yoshi, that automatically comes to mind for me. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I think you guys are all blasphemous tonight. <laughs> First talking about Walk the Dinosaur and, and 2001 Space Odyssey. Blast That's me. bad, sorry. No. One of the best <laughs> movies ever, but... Well, the best dinosaur song out there is still the theme to Denver, The Last Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, there is one that this is kind of jogging my memory on. Uh, Disney used to have like music videos like as commercials. And there was one I remember I saw. It was, I have no idea who sang it. It was like the farmer and the dinosaur or something. It was some dude in sunglasses. It was almost like a jazz kind of thing. Oh, like God. A, I, think I, remember, I think I remember that. Yeah, like a far, like a dinosaur just appears on like a farmer's like farm. And the way it's filmed is actually really creepy and implies like the farmer is killed by the dinosaur at the end of the video. Like it's it's got like this really ominous framing. It's kind of oh, like yeah, an. Disney Channel had some pretty. I would say Disney Channel had some pretty bizarre uh, segments between shows back in the nineties. They had some edgy <laughs> stuff on there. I remember watching Jaws two on Disney Channel. I don't I know remember, how that would have ever have happened. I remember watching this movie on. I remember watching this movie on Disney Channel. Better that than Jaws three. <laughs> I remember a fun filled dinosaur adventure, which was a Steve Winston. I think it was a Steve Winston. Or when uh, 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 Vinton, um, uh, the guy who who did the uh, California Raisins, um, oh, yeah. uh, he, uh, uh, I guess uh, there was a band of animated dinosaurs that sang a song called Mesosaurus or something, like that. <laughs> and uh, I remember that as a kid. <laughs> I remember there was some there was something. Also, I think that I saw on Disney, it was like really brief and it was like really, it was actually really frightening. It was just uh, like images of like the still, it was, there were just like still images of some display at a museum. And I never knew what it was. It was like a, it was like a Tyrannosaurus eating a Triceratops um, with like spooky sounds over it. And for all my life, I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and then when I came to the Milwaukee for the first time and got the tour of the public museum, like I saw that same display and I kind of froze and I was like, 
why do I remember this? And it took me, it took me a minute, but uh, apparently during one of those little segments on some like dinosaur centric thing that I saw on Disney Channel, they had just come here to Milwaukee and taken a bunch of pictures of that museum display, which I hope still exists. I hear they're remodeling. But um, so yeah, this this movie is kind of tripping all of my childhood dinosaur memories. <laughs> Yep, and actually, I think I think one of the things that didn't help this movie when it came out was that it was a go they were putting it like just they put it out like a month before Jurassic Park, um. So it was kind of uh, you're right, yeah. It was definitely the summer. It was definitely the 1993 was definitely the uh, the summer of the dinosaurs. Jurassic Park was the first movie I can re really fully remember seeing in a theater. Uh, I actually, I did, oh, I'm sorry. They didn't actually no wait. It didn't even come out a month before Jurassic Park. It came out just like two weeks before Jurassic Park did. Oh wow! Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah, that could sink anything that wasn't great gaining traction. <laughs> but yeah, ninety yeah, three. But yeah, 90, actually, I, I would say some of the dinosaurs because there was a few other dinosaur themed movies that came out that year. There was a bunch of dinosaur stuff at the time. Like I think that might be. Looking back, that may explain why uh, the Jurassic Park toys had this like tagline. If it ain't Jurassic Park, if it's not Jurassic, it's extinct. <laughs> Which suggests that was that there was a lot of competition for dinosaur themed things at the time. Oh yeah. Looking back, there certainly were. I mean that's I mean just in 1993 alone you had Super, you had Super Mario Brothers, Jurassic Park, Carnosaur, and uh, We Are Back a Dinosaur Story, all like just months apart. Wow, I didn't realize they were that close together. Holy crap. Not to mention that the uh, show Dinosaurs was still on the air. Yep, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, and then, for better or worse, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly for worse. I feel like we were unfair to Barney in retrospect. It's like, you know, I mean, there was a whole documentary about how about how people were... Uh, yeah. People were... To how toxic people were to war to about, about Barney. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if, like, to some degree, it's just, like, your child watches it all day and you're sick of hearing it in the background. Like, I can maybe probably. see that. Probably. But some people were just, like, rabid about it. And it's like, it's like the Simpsons joke, I bring you love. Just bring him love. Get him. <laughs> Let's break its legs. I, uh, I had a dress like Barney for my third, my daughter's third birthday, and I wanted to beat myself up. <laughs> <laughs> How bad Barney is. <laughs> there is a we did get that really good joke from Jurassic Park three out of it though, so worth it. Yep. Uh, anyway, so I just want to say so anyway, so it's too long to look. So here's the TLDR of it. Uh, so Super Mario Bros. Me, it didn't resemble the game much. It didn't re really resemble the game, uh, and the and the script is a bit of a mess. The script was a bit of a was was a mess, but uh, I still. Yeah. But for me, it's a childhood favorite. I still find it very entertaining, uh, and but Bob Ho and but yeah, Bob Hoskins as Mario de uh, definitely makes the movie for me. All right, so let's get into the story. Let's get into the plot. Uh, Sixty-five million years ago, a meteorite crashed into Earth, killing dinosaurs and splitting the splitting the universe into two parallel dimensions. And so the dinosaur instead of killing instead of being going extinct, the dinosaurs uh, evolved in this parallel dimension. In, uh, into a humanoid into a humanoid race, and then we flash forward to Brooklyn, uh, circa 1973. Uh, this woman, this uh, uh, it's 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 a dark and stormy night. This woman leaves leaves an egg, a large egg, uh, along with a along with a piece of a meteorite, on a on the doorstep of a of a of a Catholic convent. Um, and. Uh, and she and the the woman goes disappear. The woman disappears into the into the New York City sewers, where she's accosted by King Koopa, who demands to know where the rock is, but uh, where the meteorite is piece is. But then uh, the 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 the, ca the cave where she was she was going into uh, cr uh, ca uh, cr uh, comes caving in, on, killing her, and uh, the egg hatches, and we find and we and uh, it's it's a little it's a baby girl. We find it's a baby. Whole, holding up it was holding a baby girl we flat and then we flash forward to uh brooklyn uh in the then present day 1993 where two where the mario where the mario brothers are str are struggling to make ends meet as uh with uh as plump as with their plump with their plumbing business 
And uh, so, so one, so uh, they they get they get a gig and are beat to the beat to the punch by by a by, by a uh, conglo- by a big competitor, Scapelli Scapelli Construction, uh, led by Anthony Scapelli, who is also uh, who who is also has a construction who has a construction uh, site in Brooklyn that's being uh, being researched by by students at NYU because because of fa- mm-hmm. because of, uh, dinosaur fossils found at the site. Mm-hmm. And Scapelli threatens threatens, uh, and so the, the research is being led by da- by 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 the n- now grown infant Daisy, uh, who is an NYU student, and who and Scapelli makes makes threats to her. Let her and uh, and uh, all, there's also and also early on in this movie where we there's a little there's a a, a little a little uh, mention of, of of women going missing around Brooklyn. Right. Uh, they give they give Scarpelli a uh, a little bit of a mob boss kind of feel to him. It's uh, like they don't say it, but you yeah. still feel like maybe he would be doing uh, that too. I, I was going to say he he strikes the someone mentioned the Simpsons not long ago. That's he nice. strikes the vibe of the quote unquote legitimate businessman. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the fat Tony jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, or like, I would say, like Tony. What was it? Tony Soprano was in uh, what? Waste management, and this guy is, <laughs> this guy is in construction. In uh, construction, hmm. mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, meanwhile, so me- so meanwhile, uh, you've got uh, two, uh, two, uh, two. You've got uh, Iggy and Sp- the Iggy and Spike, the Koopa cousins, uh, going around Brooklyn looking for. Uh, looking for the princess, and it turns out they've been the ones who've been kidnapping all the w- all the women who've been going missing around Brooklyn. But of no course, they're all geniuses. Those two. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, however, they're they're total dimwits who can't seem to find to seem to uh, tell one woman one woman from another. What, what was the way you described it? One head, two legs, two arms. Yeah, that's her. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they're just picking random people. Yep. Right. At least they, at some point, they, they at least get somebody who's sort of, they get somebody who knows Daisy at some point. That's about as good as they get at this. Yeah, and she right. happens to be Mario's girlfriend. <laughs> right, because basically the Mario's, they are too late to beat Scapelli to this one job, but then I guess they... I'm trying to remember. Were they already on site at this location, or how did they meet her? Did they meet her on site? Well, what happened was what happened was uh, their van broke down. Da- Mario and Luigi's right. van break down, right? Uh, and Mar and Mario asks, tells Luigi to go to go to go to the payphone and she check. She needed the phone. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, Luigi was there, was uh, using the payphone to check to see if there was any 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 work. Uh, and uh, yeah. but then Daisy, but then uh, Daisy's waiting waiting to use the phone, so Luigi lets her use the phone. So while uh, while Mario while Mario and Luigi are fixing the van fi- fixing fixing their truck, uh, Luigi is uh, it has his eye on uh, on Daisy. Which I, yeah, it order. could have been a much shorter movie because Luigi basically blows off what sounds like a very lucrative job in order yeah. to give the phone to Daisy, and you get the feeling that if Mario heard that he probably would have killed him on the spot. <laughs> I mean, lie to Mario and says they didn't. There weren't any messages, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, so they take. So they take. Uh, so Mario and Luigi take take Daisy back to the construct. To, back to the back to the site. Uh, and I should mention the site. The mm-hmm. site is under is right on the Brooklyn under the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, so uh, and and so uh, so Mark so. Luigi invites Daisy out to dinner on a double di- on a double date with Mario and his girlfriend uh, da- uh, Daniela, which actually I should mention. This is so interesting that uh, that in this movie Mar- uh, the princess is with with Luigi and not Mario. Uh, although I feel like it's more, I, I mean, I feel like Mario's girl uh, Mario's love interest is is a believable pairing for him than the princess. Well, and I want to. You guys might remember better than I can. I don't remember growing up. The princesses generally be referred to by name, but if I'm remembering correctly, Peach is the the old school one, right? Peach Daisy is the, is the original. Um, yeah, her name so is when, yeah. Da- da- Princess Daisy was her name. So when did Daisy enter the picture as a character? I can't even remember. Sorry. Okay, so okay, as, so Princess. Um, so yeah. well, she was. She uh, was the, 
and uh, Super Mario Brothers too. Actually, yeah. no, Prince, no okay. actually, Prince, actually, uh, no, no, Daisy, Daisy, Daisy was, in, was the first one. Uh, Daisy was introduced in Super Mario Land for she, Game well, Boy. They didn't have her. She was just, the, uh, she was just the then, princess. In, uh, yeah, and uh, um, so so the princess Princess Peach. Uh, that name didn't come along until Mario has Princess Peach in the in Mario sixty four. Like yeah, in Mario sixty four they gave her a name. Yeah, uh, yeah, she was, she was just the princess. Or princess Daisy Kong. was uh, Mario Land, and of course Pauline was uh, Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong. Though a lot of people will say that the Mario and Donkey Kong is not the Mario uh, in Super Mario Brothers. Whereas the Mario and Donkey Kong is Italian, the Mario and Super Mario Brothers is Japanese, as per the creator, which hmm. is very weird. Oh, but man. apparently, Mario is is born and born and ethnically Japanese, according to his creator. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, although I remember some of the early some of the early Mario Mario media referring to the princess as Princess Toadstool before the I before. do recall that. Yes. I think it, isn't it like Toadstool Peach or something? Well, they eventually. Well, first she was Toadstool, and then they changed her name to Peach for Mario sixty four. Okay. Right. It's um, it's a confusing history, honestly. Like, <laughs> I don't think they had any really overarching plan for like how popular Mario would become and how much it would expand on itself. So I think they were just kind of making shit up before they were like, okay, <laughs> retconning a bunch of stuff. This is what it is now. Yeah, I don't think there's really any mytho any real mythology to uh, the franchise until the sixty until sixty four. Pretty much. Um, so, but so after so, Mario and Luigi go on a double. So Mario and Luigi go on a double date with Daisy and uh, and and Daniela, Mario's girlfriend, uh, and uh, and where Lu where Daisy talks about finding the fossils, uh, and. Uh, and afterwards, they part. They part their ways. Mar Mario goes to take da uh, Daniela home, while uh, while uh, Daisy and Luigi continue their uh, Luigi and Daisy continue their date uh, by with Daisy uh, showing Luigi the uh, the site of all the fossils. And just as they're, they're about to go in for a kiss, Scapelli's Scape uh, two, uh, two two of Scapelli's goons uh, sabotage the site uh, to fl uh, flooding it. Yeah, you know, they break some pipe and water is spewing out from this hallway. Right. For, us, the, for this you, mission, you, you, you missed a you missed a great line on the back. On the back. You mean the dog line? You, you missed a great <laughs> line when they were walking. Um, she was saying, "Oh, if you want to, you know, leave right now, you can." And you know, he goes, "I was just supposed to say that." So you know, you know, if you want to leave, and you know, this is bad, you can go ahead and 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 call me about it and tell me about it. <laughs> Just uh, like what you want to end it, and then call him to call or to call you about ending it. <laughs> I did find it funny that they're sitting; he's trying to call their answering service, and they and they're looking for work because they're strapped. And yeah. of course, there's somebody who's got something flooding. Yeah, and he's just like hangs it up. He's and, like, I got a big uh, flood down here. You gotta come up, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, that was also, cool. it also shows how dumb the uh, villains are when you start them off. Talking about they got these hot dogs like yeah they say this is made with real dog. Oh, they got they <laughs> the buns out. <laughs> and actually, the buns and, away. And, yep, and so actually, while uh, while uh, actually actually before this, before uh, um, before before, before uh, we see Lu uh, Luigi and Daisy in the at the at the site at the fossil site, at the site of the fossils, uh, Iggy and Spike kidnap da kidnap Daniela right as soon as Mario drops her off at home. Uh, but anyway, right. so, and uh, so anyway, Mar uh, Luigi, and Lu uh, Luigi and Daisy get Mario uh, uh, down to the site, down to the site to fix to fix the flood, to fix the le the the leaking pipes or to the fix the leak. Uh, but Iggy and Sp uh, Iggy and Sp they are uh, but they're accosted by Iggy and Spike, who knock out Mario and Luigi and take Daisy with them. Uh, so they so Luigi so Mario and Luigi follow. Well, so Mario and Luigi follow Daisy's uh, cries for help, uh, and find and find that she's been taken that uh, she's been taken through a port taken through a portal that appears to be a so appears to be solid rock, uh, and they end up jumping through. They end up jumping. They end up and uh, Daisy pop uh, pop uh, pops out of it uh, to try uh, crying out for them, uh, and 
Luigi grabs the meteorite off uh, from from Daisy's neck. Uh, so they and then they end up they end up jumping through the portal and are tra- and are transported to Dino to Dino Hatton, uh, where the uh, the world where the dinosaurs ev- uh, survived and evolved into humanoid into uh, into humanoid beings. And uh, so and and we're so down Dino Hatton. It's this dystopia. It's this. Uh, it's like Manhattan. It's supposed to be this. Alt, like an oh, ultra yeah, Manhattan. Yeah. It's very dystopian. Uh, there's fungus everywhere. There's di- like uh, little. There's little dinosaur creatures are uh, fighting over this fungus. Uh, all sorts of chaos going on. You get one of the uh, uh, rather amusing line here where Mario's like. This can't be Manhattan. Manhattan. Luigi's is like, I don't know. I haven't been in Manhattan for a couple of weeks. It must have been a bad couple it must of weeks. Have been a bad couple of weeks. <laughs> and, and Mario's like, I knew we went into the river, but this can't be Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and actually, and and um, and Mario and Mario and, uh, Mar- and uh, Mario and Luigi are caught are uh, they're accosted by this old lady who's got a t- with a, who's c- got a cattle prod. <laughs> um. Uh. Well, actually, before that, actually before that, I like, um, that was really fun. Yeah, she comes yeah. up to them and she's very friendly and yeah, like, sweet, old lady. sweet old lady, <laughs> very concerned. Uh, you, you guys, yeah. are you any weapons? Are you armed? <laughs> are you? Oh, well then, <laughs> and I'm up, suckers. I need super coins. And uh, she's to- and uh, and that old lady is tossed up, is talked over a car rail into a moving uh, car. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it just shows the world is definitely I'm a, a wrestler. Uh, Not really a <laughs> definitely a dog eat dog world. But yeah. I like how you they introduced the kind of jetpacks, which I was going to say dinosaur they, eat dinosaur world. <laughs> that, I mean, they eventually utilize that as their way of simulating the jumps. I don't know why I didn't think about it that one of those one of the uh, two goons is named after one of the Koopa kids. Yep. <laughs> I, oh, before this, we were we're introduced to uh, you know we're introduced to uh, King Koopa to uh, to I mean we, even though we saw him early in the movie, but we're uh, we we're in King we're in King Koopa's uh, lair in King Koopa's lair, uh, like he's he kind of lives in an ivory, ivory tower above the rest of Dino Hatton, and we see that he's also very obsessed. He's very germophobic and obsessive compulsive. Uh, he's like he's obsessed with cleanliness. Right. Yeah, I love how it says both to him like you have a choice. <laughs> Actually, um, that was one of the other interesting lines. Like we were talking before about the movie. Like I think Forrest, I think you said you saw it on Disney Channel or something. It's like yeah, and, and it was technically like an offshoot of Disney producing it. But one of the weird things about the film that was part of the reason why it became a hot mess. It really is very schizophrenic. Partly, you do have this actually relatively well thought out. You know, as Dustin said, it was a nice riff on the idea, uh, like a, 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 a dystopian sci-fi, not at all what we thought we were signing up for for Mario. But if you go in with an open mind, it's an interesting twist on the story. Yeah, and we do have some good concepts there that are more adult skewing, but they also had it was backed by Disney, and eventually the producers are like, "Wait, this is too adult. This was based on a kids' game. Damn it, we're going to put the we're going to put the brakes on and turn this into a kids' movie." And so the movie has this weird; it doesn't know what it wants to be yeah. at the time. And what and that is one of the best lines that sums that up. Koopa keeps taking these mud baths, you know? Yeah. You see yeah. a couple of scenes with him doing the mud baths. And there's this one part where he's like, Do you uh, know clean. what I love it's about clean. mud? It's clean and it's dirty at the same time. Dirty at the same time. At the same time. And if you notice he's also got like also Koopa holds holds a walkie-talkie with a with a yeah. with a with a with a napkin. Right. But just like the way Dennis Hopper gave that line. It was not out of a kid's movie. 
<laughs> and, and I was like, okay, <laughs> isn't that yeah. something? <laughs> so I actually, um, I, I fell asleep for about 15 minutes uh, on this watch, and I think I missed hearing that line, but I always remembered it it as being, it's clean and it's filthy at the same time. So Close what enough. should we say? It's clean and it's dirty at the same time. Okay. That's what he says. Right. Oh, so he says so not too far me. off there. And then, of course, you have the clubs where they apparently hired actual strippers. strippers to play yeah. Dancers. <laughs> well, I mean, th there are a few little things that just come into mind. They're like when they load their gun with the bullet bill, which some of those cartoony things like that and the bomb bomb that they use, uh, though they match the game, they definitely <laughs> stick out as odd in that world. Yeah. <laughs> I like the little bomb. He's cute. <laughs> I know, like visibly terrified yeah. of it. Everyone is as soon as they're like, "He's got a bomb!" and they yep. all run, and like Koopa himself kind of like freezes, like like he doesn't run, but he just kind of hesitates. And he's like, Ugh. "I know everybody, everybody's afraid of it, and he's so little." <laughs> yep, but they, well, you can see those damage, those things yeah, too. Like, but anyway, so boom! um, so Koopa. So, <laughs> So King Koopa is trying to plot, planning to, to merge the two, the two wants to merge the two dimensions, uh, and he's all and he's and as he's talking to his part to his partner Lena, uh, who is clear who uh, is pre is uh, clear uh, pretty clearly uh, and uh, jealous of the princess. Uh, so and he finds out Iggy and so Iggy and Spike come into his come into his office and tell saying they got they finally got the princess. But uh, they don't have the rock, but uh, but they know who has it. They know who, ha but they know who has it. The plumbers, the plumbers take the plumbers it. So, have it. Send the uh, plumber so uh, alert. Koopa, Koopa puts out a plumber a, a plumber alert uh, for Mario for Mario and Luigi. So uh, after after big so after Big Bertha, the bouncer of the Boom Boom Bar, makes off with the rock. Uh, Mario and Luigi are kind of are. Are to, um, are encounter a street a busker encounter Toad, who in this version of the, of the of the who in this version, instead of being an anthropomorph mushroom, he is a a he is a punk rock busker. <laughs> and uh, my dad actually remember the first time I watched this with my dad with my dad he was like, hey I know that guy, <laughs> <laughs> Mojo yeah because Mojo Nixon's a very uh, very prolific. Uh, uh, si uh, si uh, record uh, singer. It was an interesting haircut he had because he had yeah. kind of the hair uh, shaved into a spiral there at the top. And so, uh, to and so uh, he starts singing an anti. Oh, he, he starts singing a, a, an anti Koopa song, which gets him arrested. And uh, Mario and Luigi, Mario and Luigi intervene, uh, but then uh, but then the cops notice that notice Mario and Luigi's tools, and have them arrested. <laughs> Oh. I can't believe this. I'm getting arrested for being a plumber. I'm getting arrested for being a plumber. <laughs> so they're taken. They're taken to the police state. They're taken to the police station, and they're def and where uh, where when they're when when they're being uh, when they're being checked in, uh, the cop the cops ask Mario and Luigi for their names, asking them what how many Mar uh, and the cop can't keep track of how many Mario's there are in their group in their in their party. A Mario. There's three Mario, 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 Mario. Wait, what? Three Marios. The so last Mario, names are Mario, 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 Mario. What are we doing? <laughs> but uh, but and, so Mario and Luigi are sending the are they're 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 go, they go through the uh defunguscing unit, uh because of the of the fungus choking the city, which is actually the which is actually the Daisy Spawn of the Mushroom King, who's been de-evolved. Uh. And uh, and they're and they're putting they're putting holdings they're putting they go through the defunguscing unit they get their mug shots taken and are put in a holding and are put in a holding cell uh, before they are taken to King Koopa pro, who is posing as a lawyer uh, who demand and uh, for no reason at all <laughs> yeah just he just wants the raw at first he 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 acts like he's no, he's Going to uh, fight fight for them, but no, he wants he just wants the rock. And as soon as uh, Mar as, as soon as Mar <clears throat> Mario attacks Mario attacks him, and uh, the cops pull pull him back, he gets uh, his, his assistant spray uh, or, uh, sprays it sprays his his hands. No one attacks the president. <laughs> he 
He's like, ah, you touched me. No. Yep. Can we just comment on how interesting, like, the character they created for Koopa? Because he's he's obviously nuts. Yeah. And, and, and dangerous. Oh. But he's also got this kind of goofy sensibility to him. Like, it's hard to put into words. He's kind of like a little, like, Howard Hughes. I, I love how he's uh, fried and, himself, too. He's like Howard Hughes. He's so Hughes so yeah. So uh, Mario and Luigi are taken yeah, to. Uh, okay. So oh, didn't you just say uh, <coughs> it's true, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, so that? Mario, Luigi, and Toad are taken to the de evolution chamber where Toad is de is de evolved into a Goomba. Um, who, who are not who, unlike the games, are not these little uh, brown these little brown dudes with with sharp teeth, but uh, they've got large bodies oh. and really small heads and flamethrowers. Yeah, I was never a fan of the Goomba look in this. Movie. Yeah, uh, I, I uh, thought that the choice. As a kid, I could see how it might appeal, but uh, though I, I'm not gonna lie, the part yeah. later on where they're all dancing to the music that does amuse me. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's very fun. Yeah. Like the Goombas are so dumb that when they hear music, they just like involuntarily dance. Yep. They would have been and, fun uh, to fight in the game. Well, Luigi started it, but they 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 went along with it pretty well. Yep. And that was yeah. the, all of the that all of the, when uh, when Toad thing. is first turned into a Goomba, he gets he's given a, a given a harmonica. They, when uh, <laughs> when I when I was uh, living yeah. with my friend Andrew for a while, and I was like, "Hey, do you want to like watch? Have you ever seen the Mario Brothers movie?" And instead of answering me, he just like got this blank look in his eyes and started doing the Goomba dance. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just like rocking back and forth, basically. It's well, cool. the Goombas, like in the movie, they're like complete opposite of what they lo normally look like. They normally are bigger on the top and smaller on the bottom. And in the movie, it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, I don't think there were any 3D like, representations of Goombas yet. So it was kind of an interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, it's it was a weird interpretation, but I mean, uh, they could have called them Koopa Troopas instead of Goombas. Yeah. But um, I guess I could understand it in a way if you're looking at it in mob boss terms. I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, they didn't look like the Koopa Troopers. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they were. Anyways, like, yeah. It was anyway, it was, it was it Deadly, Deadly Loyal and Stoop. Uh... They didn't have the Koopa Troopers. They should have had the Koopa Troopers. I sort of feel like the cops in this movie are supposed to be the Koopa Troopas, or at least, uh, or at least, it, yeah. But they, yeah, they did a bad job of making them look like turtles. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but anyway, Mario and Luigi. So uh, Mario and Luigi put uh, put Koopa in this in the de evolution chair, and uh, send him send try to, and send him back a, a several million years while they make an escape. Uh, uh, and are chased by and are chased by the chased by the Goombas and the cops, uh, and and which and which they end up and they end up stealing they end up stealing a cop car, and send on it and uh, who and uh, take the cops for a for a little chase around Dino Hatton. I thought that was a cool part. Uh, they yeah. uh, they ended up on top of like another another car, car up, yep. either upside down or right side up. And uh, they, well, they they were just on top of the on top of the car, yeah. like uh, facing backwards. And, and Mario uh, thought like, he was driving real like really cool. And Luigi's just like, I hope the guy downstairs knows where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> and then later, well, then later on, he's telling them to hit the brakes, and he's like, "What? There are no brakes because you know." They don't realize oh, yeah. it's, it's on like a track above them, you know. That's what runs the car. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they use like one of those uh, things where they catch uh, <laughs> airplanes with to stop the cars, which is kind of cool. Yep. And then the contraption that makes the, the cars. The funniest thing like, I say does my cars. driving skills. Like a go kart, like <laughs> And then Luigi, like the tunnel needs us up, and this giant boger catches ca caught us. As they are, as they end up in the desert, they end up in the desert outside the city. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, da meanwhile, uh, Daisy has been put has been has been uh, put in a cell with all the girl, all the all the missing Brooklyn girl with uh, Danielle and the rest of the missing Brooklyn, Brooklyn girls. Uh, and they're and so they don't know Daisy what's going too. on. <laughs> but uh, what's going on? 
anyway so mario and luigi so mario and luigi are are in the debt are in the debt are meanwhile well, mario and luigi are stranded in the desert uh you know, uh the uh koopa has has his cut has iggy and spike sent to the de-evolution chamber and to have their intelligence increased uh and so they're a lot smarter but still they're so they're a lot smarter now but also yeah. but still kind of dim, still dim-witted I was um, gonna say it didn't do them much good overall. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't help much. <laughs> now they're like, they're still them. Like, they're this dumb. So it's like, eh. they, they, they ended up joining Mario and Luigi when they got smarter. A great deal of smarts, but not a lot of common sense. Yeah, I think I think what happened was the de-evolution. They 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 became book smart, but they still didn't. But like you were saying, they didn't have like they don't they don't have common sense. Like they, uh, call, they call Koopa a fascist to his face, and it's like, uh, I mean, you're right, but maybe, yeah. maybe wait for him to turn turn around, you know? <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Daisy has taken his. Uh, okay, yeah. Meanwhile, Daisy. Meanwhile, Daisy is uh, removed from is uh, removed from the from the from the Goomba barracks, uh, and uh, she and uh, and and uh, kind of sees kind of finds her birthright uh, as she dons her mother as she. Dons one of her mother's dresses, and uh, and meets Yoshi, and uh, meets Yoshi, as well as getting perved on by Koopa. Yeah. Is there any, like what Yoshi is in this movie? Like, is he just like a pet? I guess or... they said he's the head of the royal family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they said he was the royal. Bite your hand off. <laughs> he wasn't treated like a very nice pet, though. He was yeah, cute, no. and he was nice, and they were mean to him. Well, Koopa was mean. Well, Koopa and Lena are mean to him. He's got a little bit of Mississippi leg. He out. was not. <laughs> yeah. The, the princess treated him nice, though. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, she treated him nice, because she realized he was a nice little dinosaur. <sighs> Actually, this is one. Of, actually, I'm just going to you right now that uh, this is one of the after school movies is that, that doesn't make sense to me now. Looking back now, is that so? Daisy is like basically half dinosaur, half fungus. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, fungus is such a great thing. Well, movie. yeah, I guess. Well, I guess it depends on when the king was devolved, but whatever. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so anyway, um, Mario and Luigi are in the de- are in the desert, making their way back to Dino Hat, trying to make their way back to Dino oh, Hat. When uh, they're when uh, Iggy and Spike try to attack them, but fail miserably, and so so Mario and Luigi tie them up and start and start inter- start uh, interrogating them to get info on the ro- to get info on the ro- on the rock and to uh, to get info on the rock and why why it's why it's so important. Yeah. So uh, Mario and Luigi. So uh, Mario and Luigi attack a bunch of. Well, they never say say him by name, but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be shy guys. Uh, if you're familiar with the with the characters from the game, um, uh, who are uh, who are who are uh, at a dis- uh, garbage disposal site. So they make their way back into this. They make their way back into the city, and uh, and go to the Boom Boom Bar where Big Bertha is the bouncer. And uh, they get the rock, and and uh, Mario dances his way uh, to getting the rock back from back from Big Bertha. But then Lena and the Goombas show up, uh, and Mario and Luigi try to try to pat, try to th- toss try to uh, football the you try uh, throw the rock rock around like a football to try and get get it away from the Goombas. But Le- Lena eventually gets Lena gets, but eventually it goes flying right into right under Lena's foot. And uh, she takes, and uh, so she take. She's got the rock while while Iggy and Spike are taken away, taken taken into custody, and Mario and Luigi have to make a get have to make a getaway. So they don the the stompers, the thwomps, uh, to make to make uh, to make a get to make a getaway. Because Bertha helps them. Yep. Yeah, because she's got mad love for Mario. Just like in the games, <laughs> uh, she, give, she gives them the, the the boots, the jumpy boots. Yep, and, and she um, gives them a big kiss. <laughs> yep, and so uh, Mario and Luigi a brother, <laughs> gets a big uh, kiss. Uh, <laughs> so Mario and Luigi might may take a dump take a dump <laughs> truck to uh, oh. the Koopa Towers. 
uh, where they take where they uh, where they start where they start uh, where they where they start uh, uh, messing with the cooling system uh, to freeze the build it to freeze the building. Which I think at this point Koopa has. Actually they didn't seem too uh, too too worried about the build. The yeah. Cooper special. Yeah. I feel like the only thing that it applied to is when they ride the pipe later in the movie, and uh, the ice is used to help move them faster through there. Well, also because I think it's the Goombas, because you know they're still they're more more they're more. But the, the girls are cold. The girls are like this. We need some heat. Yeah, I thought that was seen as kind of weird. Like the girls are cold, and the Goomba is like fine instead of like unconscious in the corner. Yeah. Um, so, but they, they said they, they cool, they yeah, cool, the they, they should be uh, like frozen solid. <laughs> <laughs> well, they if any of them were actually cold blooded, then yeah, they'd be screwed. <laughs> so, uh, Mario and Luigi, uh, uh, cool the building and, yeah, they, they uh, and get, been... guys, get to disguises. the disguises. They're, uh, yeah. they're trademark red and green overalls and caps. Um, <laughs> I like how the loud jumpsuits are disguises. Yep. <laughs> so they, so uh, they're making their, so they, so they, so they, they, they take the elevator well, to the top. Compared to those uh, Stalin suits they had on before, I guess so. Well, they were, those, well, those outfits were a little bit fat, weren't they? Were <laughs> they look like rappers from the 80s. Yeah. Uh, well, at least they're the right colors. <laughs> Well, Mar well, Luigi, I don't know. For some reason, Luigi had Mario's color, and Mario had Wario's color. <laughs> um, but uh, so they're riding the elevator to the top of the Koopa Towers when uh, all when Go when Goombas start start boarding floor by floor, and uh, Mario and Luigi start have to start sneaking around them and get them to start uh, start dancing. <laughs> I love that. Part. <laughs> they're that so big, great. they hide behind they're like them fifty in the, in fucking. Elevator. Goombas and then the later on, uh, later on, uh, Koopa gets a, a a call. Hey, sir, uh, we can't get uh, get the Goombas to stop stop dancing. <laughs> uh, it becomes like a running gag. Sir, the Goombas are dancing again. <laughs> like, uh, so I like how, uh, I do how like the sense of continuity they have with those little like I think, getting phone calls thing. And I he's ordering a pizza. Point, uh, point. Uh, 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 yeah, he's like shouting out. orders at them. Okay. And like he put, he starts to put the he starts to put the walkie talkie down and then he picks it back up and where's my pizza? pizza. <laughs> and then like during like the final battle, it's like what? Sir, your pizza, your pizza is here. here. Not now. I feel like how there is a moment where oh, pizza is here. Princess Daisy it, it, it gets uh the the one Goomba uh, Goomba to uh, to bring her a piece of meat and she's like, I'm vegetarian. Do you think you could bring me uh, uh, some vegetables? vegetables? And then uh, she the sneaks out the room and runs into him, and he's got a plate of vegetables. But that's, 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 just yeah. angry, that's Toad. Yeah, but he's still a Goomba. Yep. He's a good Goomba. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, but he actually brought her uh, vegetarian food like she asked. And now uh, when she ran off, he, he's like chasing her down like her, her food, and then he gets set on fire. And she's like, we need to leave him. We'll use the fire to throw things on them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, she. So, as the Goombas. Are, so, and before all oh, before that, uh, Lena comes into into Daisy's room and try and uh, is about to kill her with a knife when Yoshi when uh, Yoshi gra gra uh, Yoshi grabs Lena with with his tongue to try and swallow her, but she stabs Yoshi. Uh, but actually, well, actually, you know, she does give give Daisy an opportunity to escape, uh, in all this. But uh, Lena stabs Yoshi, uh, as right as he's about to swallow her. But Yoshi's not big enough to really like eat her. Yeah. But um, but uh, Iggy and Spike, but uh, Daisy extinguishes Toad, and then while well, Iggy and Spike uh, take her, take take Daisy to her father, who's been de uh, in his in his uh, fungal form. Uh, yeah, we get that backstory where Koopa, he was Koopa's first de evol de evolution victim. Yes. Somehow turned him into, he turned him all the way back into like a slime mold. So I don't think that's really how, I mean, it is sort of how evolution works, I guess, if you go back enough, but I feel like you wouldn't be able to do that per se. 
And we do find that, and we do, and also at some point, also mentioned early, earlier, uh, we find out that Koopa has been taking his de-evolution device into, uh, has been weaponizing it into, uh, into a gun, which is really, uh, which is basically a Super Nintendo Super Scope, a modified Super right. Nintendo Super Scope. I did really enjoy that their guns were Super Scopes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so the best I, uh, use for that the, item, too. The, I was one of the few kids who, who had a super scope. Uh, I still have it. It's on my wall, like, right next to me right now. I thought about, I wanted to get one for just so I could play Yoshi Safari, but they were too expensive and too heavy. It was such a useless peripheral overall because there weren't very many games for it. I mean, there I were know. there was Yoshi Safari, the and one. then it did come with... There was also Terminator 2. Terminator, you can also play Terminator 2 with it. Oh, really? Yeah, the arcade game. Uh, <laughs> or like they had the port, they had the port, they had the uh, the port of the arcade game. Uh, me and my best friend in high school uh, used to uh, basically exchange it. Uh, I was like, "Oh, it's your birthday! Here, have the super scope." And then it was, it's like, "Oh, hey, it's your birthday! Guess what you get? The super scope." <laughs> it was uh, it was sort of funny how uh, I got the super scope because. Uh, I was really loving, like, Super Mario World. This was somewhat shortly after I had gotten my Super NES. And me and Dad... Um, Dad would just, like, take you to places and buy you stuff. Like, he'd never, like, hug you or tell you he cared about you or do anything like that. But he would buy you stuff. Like, he'd be like, hey, we're going to Toys R Us. And it's like, oh, okay. And that was that was just what he did. And on one trip... Uh, it, well, it might have been Best Buy that we got uh, Yoshi's Safari on. So we pick that up, uh, we take it home, and it's like, oh, we need a super scope for this? What's that? And like a couple of weeks later, um, apparently he had a really hard time finding one. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I came home from like, I think it was like first grade or something. It was so long ago. And there was a new super scope in a box in my bed. And, uh, you know, I was actually able to beat uh, Yoshi's Safari. Yoshi's Safari was one of the first games I was ever able to successfully complete, like be beat it totally and apparently it has like an unlockable hard mode and i managed to beat that too so i still have that yoshi safari cartridge uh as well actually it's next to the super scope on my shelf oh nice yeah i have the uh, the part that plugs into the super nes i have that somewhere too it's in kind of a box of like electronics but uh yeah so it's uh, it was nice seeing the super scope again in this movie because it's like oh yeah I remember all that stuff now. Yep. So uh, anyway, so anyway, uh, Mario and Luigi are trying to find their way, make their way to Daisy, and uh, they and uh, I don't know for some, I don't, this is one part that bothered, that bothered me like why they ditched why they ditched the uh, the boots. Um. Uh, after they got out of the elevator. Um. But uh, they, but they, they, they make their way to. They're trying to make. So Daisy's in the in the funk in the in the, the chamber with with her father, um, and Mario and Luigi are making are in, a, in an un unfinished part of the building, uh, where Mario almost falls to his death, but uh, the fungus creates a, creates a trampoline for Mario to uh, uh, to break his fall, <laughs> and uh, they make their so they make their way across the uh, the unfinished part the unfinished uh, b uh, part of the building. Uh, where they, where they, where Daisy, uh, and da Daisy sees them through surveillance and calls to them. So, uh, so while Mario and Luigi go to make their way to go make their way to Daisy, uh, Koopa, fi uh, Koopa finds out that, uh, that Lena ha finds out that Lena has the rock and had been issuing orders without his, without his authorization and has her, and has her, has her detained. <clears throat> I, I like that little moment, like on the video call. It's like we're ready, sir. And so he's like, "For what?" It's like, "Oh, uh, to do the thing." And he's like, "Who told you to? Who gave you that order?" It's like, "You did, sir." It's like, "Oh," and he's just he has like this look of like confusion and anger. It's uh, I don't know. I really like Dennis Hopper in this because yeah, like he is given it everything he's got. Like he plays this like a real like insane dictator. Oh, that's he's really good. Enough. He's really good at play. I don't know. I guess, well, I between this movie, between this movie, Speed and Blue Velvet, yeah, you know, oh, <laughs> this would have been a great um, like to do. back to back with Blue Velvet. You know, yeah, right? <laughs> Hopper, Hopper was a Hopper was a character when it came to his acting. Uh, he was well known for being very opinionated and prickly, and for taking 
either are jobs he really wanted to take or he would clearly take paycheck hmm. roles and make it clear that's what he was doing. And But even so, you wouldn't always tell from his acting because he would give it a great – he would give it his all, whatever oh, he yeah. was doing. And I did love – one of my favorite trivia things I found on this one, uh, they had this thing on IMDb that said uh, – Dennis Hopper explained why he did the film. I made a picture called Super Mario Brothers, and my six-year-old son at the time, he's now 18, he said, Dad, I think you're probably a pretty good actor, but why did you play that terrible guy, King Koopa, in Super <laughs> Mario Brothers? And I said, well, Henry, I did that so you can have shoes. And he said, Dad, I don't need shoes that badly. <laughs> uh -huh. I just thought that was a great response there. That's a that's a good story. I remember hearing that before. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was uh, he he definitely this was well known as one of his more definite paycheck roles. Definitely, but yeah. he really is entertaining in the role. Like you you get the feeling like yeah. even if he was not having a good time, he channeled that in a way that made the. the Hit him fun to watch, if nothing else. Oh, he oh, is definitely. Yeah. the scenery. I like in this movie too. One of the great scenes. Yeah, yeah. I would say in the eighties, nineties was a great time for like for scene chewing villains. Uh, right. And uh, also, actually, well, by the way, I don't know if anybody noticed noticed this. Um, so because prior because several years prior, uh, Dennis Hopper had been had uh, was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. And uh, if you notice on the streets of like in the in the in the scenes of, in the streets of Dino Manhattan. There is a billboard of Koopa holding a chainsaw, uh, which I feel like was supposed to be an, an, uh, an Easter egg or like a nod to his role in, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Yeah, I caught that. I was like, is, why have you got a chainsaw? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if only they'd made a blue velvet nod. Uh, right? And especially because both of these, filmed, both these both Super Mario Bros. and Blue Velvet were filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. Right, and actually, from what I understand, the uh, Dino Hatton set was apparently the same set they used for um, for Ninja Turtles too. I think. Yes, Shredder's Lair. Shredder's Lair. Yeah. It was also right. uh, it was also in uh, Cyborg with John Claude Van Damme. Right. I thought something I about the layout too. Hmm? I thought something about the layout looked familiar. It's like, have I seen this place before? And it's like, now that like I'm cutting off the lights in my brain, it's like, oh. Yeah, it's supposed to be a cement plant, an old, an abandoned cement plant. Right. Um, but anyway, so but so back to the back to the movie. Um, so Mar so Mar so Mar so Mario so Mar so uh, Mario leaves uh, Luigi with Daisy while he goes to rescue Daniela and the Brook and the missing Brooklyn girls. But uh, Luigi and Luigi and Daisy are captured by Coop by Koopa. Uh, while uh, Mario Mario was able to free is it, it Mario after after battle after battle with a after a quick battle with a with a Goomba he uh, he uh, he's uh, he uh, in the Goomba barracks he ta um, he he and uh, the Brooklyn girls take a mat take uh, take a mattress and go for a little ride through the ventilation system. Well, that was that was a fun scene. Yes, you know, hmm? he, was... and then one girl. They're telling her, be quiet. You, ah, Mario! <laughs> Mario, no! And that was supposed to resemble them going through the pipes, which was kind of a cool yeah. nod in that. Uh, like I say, they tried nice little nods. In this, and I, I think they did okay on some parts. Like, And that's that's one of the better ones, I think. I did like that they loaded the gun with a bullet belt. That that part did. <laughs> yeah, actually, they, put, they loaded the, the boot with a, with a, with a bullet. And then uh, whatever it was with the bullet belt, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, 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 they take the mattress. They take the mattress to the ventilation system and go flying into the streets of Manhattan, crashing cra and knocking some Goombas over. Um, but they take the boot. They take a boot, and uh, but Mario takes a boot. Takes one of the boots, uh, loads it up with a bullet bill, and and uh, hits and hits uh, Koopa and the Goombas with it, <laughs> or, uh, or fires it at Koopa and the Goombas. But uh, yeah, I, like how, I like how the mattress comes to that pipe and just happens to like directly hit uh, Koopa and his goons. Yep, they just happen to walk in front of that pipe at the right time. 
and uh, Koopa ends up losing lose because and uh, Koopa ends up losing possession of the rock, which uh, which uh, Lena catches, but then she loses her balance and falls into a rail like a <laughs> like electric rail like wire. electrical. Hmm? It's like the grid for the streetcars. Yeah, and uh, you know, ca- ca- zaps her hair, but uh, she yeah she makes off with the rock to go and uh, well Mario well Mario and Koopa are battling each other. Uh, Lena makes off with the rock. Uh, Lu- J- Luigi and Daisy go after her. Uh, she ends and she ends up mer- she ends up uh, putting the rock into the meat into the meat into the meteorite uh, and causing the dimensions to causing the dimensions to merge. Uh, which brings Mar- which brings Mario Koopa and the Goombas to Ma- to Brooklyn, where uh, where where uh, where Go- where Mario where he's where Koopa's about to de-evolve Mario with a with a de- with a gu- with a de-evolution gun, but ends up hitting Scapelli and de-evolves him into a chimp. Yeah, they they appear. Uh, the, the dimensions start to merge, and Mario and Koopa reappear like right in the middle of a standoff between. Scapelli and oh, his yeah. goons and like the paleontologists, and then also and then also the twin towers turn into the Koopa towers. Um, yeah, I saw them and I was like, "Oof." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I mean, it's um, it's kind of sad though because of all of these older movies. I mean, I think a lot of people have forgotten just how important a landmark those were. Yeah, were. Oh, yeah. right. Um, like there are there are people today who were who have never seen like the Twin Towers. Yeah, like, I mean, in media. I mean, well, that's I mean, the I sad my, thing. Obviously, my because my my uncle was my uncle was was a New York a New York City police officer, and he was one of the first responders for nine eleven. So like he had to evacuate the towers. Um, I mean, he did survive, but yeah, that really. I mean, that, that one hit, hit like close one. Hmm? I, I think it. Yeah. I think that the world did, that we did a disservice to ourselves by editing out as many images of the twin Absolutely. towers as possible, which is like rem- like uh, I okay. remember when remember when like I remember originally like in the first Spider Man movie yeah. there was supposed to be a scene where Spidey catches some bank robbers with with uh, by by putting his webs by putting by setting up a giant web between the twin towers right and that got cut from the film. Yep, they had to cut that scene out. See, that's why more people need to watch The Walk. Yep. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, I just imagine think of like uh, like young like uh, I think they're called I think it's like Zoomers now is the term. Zoomer, uh, yeah, yeah, Gen Z. Right. I just imagine some Zoomers like uh, you know like you'll get a close up of the Twin Towers in an old movie and they'll be like, "What are those?" Yeah, right. That's kind of yeah. It's just kind of weird to think. Of. That's kind of weird, like having to explain that stuff to uh, like I have a I have a. I have a soon to be 11 year old nephew that I have that uh, wouldn't get it. That, pro- that probably, you know, he would, you know, he'd be too young to understand it. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so, but anyway, so Mar- so Mar- anyway, back to the, uh, we, got, we got sidetracked a little bit, but uh, Mario, but, um, but so Mar, so Mar, so Koopa turns Scapelli into a monkey. Um, and then he tr- and uh, then tries to attack and then tries to and then tries to fire again at Mario, but Mario uses takes the mushroom, uh, takes a mushroom that he uses that he had gotten from the fungus. To trust the fungus is a is a line that said quite a few times throughout this movie, and he uses the fung he uses the mushroom as a shield, and then flings it at Koopa to knock the gun out of his hand. Yeah, you know, I always um, I always thought if this um, movie got one of those kind of tacky like pop art. Uh, Blu-rays that appear at Walmart every once in a while that have like a quote from the movie. Trust the fungus would be the cover quote for this movie. <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know that. why, but when Nostalgia Critic covered this uh, a little while ago, he had a cut of of Dennis Hopper saying "monkey," and I don't know why, but that just is hilarious. Oh no, believe me, I believe me, I've I've I, I've used that, I use that, I use because there's actually a GIF of that that I use a lot, <laughs> uh, just for shits and giggles. Um, Funny, but uh, meanwhile, but me, but meanwhile, uh, Luigi and Daisy are trying to get the get are trying to get the the meteorite piece out out from out of actually. So Lena had merged the two dimensions, and and in the process had accidentally fought, got herself fossilized. Um. She likes but, uh, getting electric. She makes yeah. an she makes an impression. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and yeah, she and you her jaw, her jaw drops in uh, in almost laughter esque 
uh, expression. But uh, Mario, but uh, Luigi, but uh, Luigi and Daisy are trying to extract the meteorite piece from the from the from the meteor from the meteorite, um, and uh, they they eventually get it out after 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 uh, Luigi puts together some sort of makeshift tool. Um, and, uh, so Mario, so Mario, Koopa, and the Goombas are sent back to Dino Hat. Uh, and, um, Louis, and, uh, Louis, and Luigi, Luigi and, uh, Luigi and Mario take, to, take, uh, take, take the de-evolution guns and start, uh, start, and start firing them at Koopa, who starts de- who, who starts de- being, getting de-evolved into a T-Rex. Uh, actually, but before this, Mario had set off a bob- uh, before they, even before they, they had been, Transported to Brooklyn, uh, Mario had set, had uh, had set up had uh, detonated. Wound a, a, he wound up a bomb and like set it, set it going towards Cuba, but then it fell into a hole, and they were like, "Oh well, what was the point of that?" Yep, but uh, the whole but like everybody in Dino Hat is like running away, <laughs> running away from it. Um, but they're sent back. But uh, Mario and Luigi are start start blasting uh, Koopa with the de-evolution guns, turning him into a into into a more reptilian form. Meanwhile, the bomb makes its way back up under Koopa and, and explodes, cause, fly, sending him flying into, um, like a, into a vat. That's I don't know for some reason I don't know like why. I mean I know that this is this movie is being filmed in a cement cement plant, but it's like how come they ha- how come why like why is there a a vat in the middle of the of the big green like metal drum? Yeah, yeah. Or like right in the middle of the city streets, uh, or like right above the city streets, um. And, but he goes flying in there, and he and he emerges as as a full as a full fledged T Rex, which I think which I don't think a T Rex could actually fit into one of those. Th- would if a T Rex was in that in one of those things, it would have gone. It would have crushed. Well, it. my, it's my like understanding is that they originally wanted a full T Rex, but they did not want to pay for it. So that sounds yeah. that sounds that sounds accurate. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, he start so but so Mario and Luigi blast Koopa some more. And he turns into a pri- into a puddle of primordial oo- of primordial ooze. I like how he's very briefly uh, like a prehistoric amphibian. Um, yeah, I remember like a Tenno spondle or something. Like it's it's something it's a, a stage you see like as he's falling and turning into goo. Like you see it have like a mouth, and that's. You almost miss the amphibian stage if you're not looking closely. Mm. But I like that they did that. Yeah. There was a there was a missed opportunity, in my opinion, of having them fight the giant T Rex for a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh I don't know why. I think I, I misremembered it from when I was young. I always thought that they ended up having to fight the T Rex. Right. <laughs> Again, that was probably a budget concern, as I'm sure I was looking at a list of things they left out from the original script that were more game accurate. And one of them is Koopa always falls in the lava, and he doesn't really do that. Yeah. Either, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could have had like something. I, I felt yeah, like looking back, yeah, and that you mentioned, yeah, they could have had something like that where he's where they're battling him and he falls into like lava or some other, um, like bolted, uh. Yeah, substance. Oh, but then again, that. But then again, but then again, t- this movie came out two, only two years after Terminator Two. So, and only one year after Alien, right. after Alien Three. So they right. might have been trying to avoid the comparisons. Right. And then the uh, my favorite thing that would have been a game Easter egg that apparently was in the script that they decided not to do. I'm a little disappointed in them. Apparently, there was a point in the script. Where someone told Mario, "Your princess is in another, in another castle," and they didn't. Oh man! <laughs> the hell! <laughs> That's disappointing. We <laughs> well, we gotta see if Chris Pratt makes it up for us. <laughs> yes, Thank you, but will. your princess is in another castle. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Mar- so um, so 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 Koopa's so been defeated. And uh, this and the, and the citizens of Dino Hatton start uh, begin cheering and celebrate. Uh, they cheer and celebrate the Super Mar- the, the Super Mario Brothers, who uh, take one victory lap around around uh, around the, the town square with the with the with the with the with the, with the, with the, thwomp, with, the thwomp, with the stompers. Uh, so and uh, 
But 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 Mario and Luigi have to go back. Have to find that they have, have to go. Back, uh, but Mario and Luigi make their way back. But Daisy uh, decides to stay behind so she can re, uh, so she can get more uh, uh, get get uh, re, re, uh, establish a relationship with her father and her roots, uh, her reclaim her birthright. So she kisses Luigi goodbye, and uh, they well Mar and Mario Luigi and uh, Mario Luigi return to Brooklyn. Where uh, and we flash forward, we fla we jump forward three weeks later. Uh, Mario, Luigi, and, da and Daniela are make are making dinner are making dinner when uh, when they find out when they when they are on the new when they're on the news, and a reporter calls them the uh, with the with the, with the dancing Goombas. Well, well and, Luigi's uh, uh, too busy. So there was a camera crew when that happened. Yeah. Yeah. And the do and the and the reporter calls them the Super Mario. Bro I calls them the Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> um. And so they end, uh, but then Daisy uh, uh, arrives uh, arrives at their door, uh, looking like uh, looking like she had just been out of a gotten out of a battle, uh, telling them to cut to, telling, <laughs> and she, she, telling them telling them that, that she needs them. Uh, so they so Mario so Mar, so Mario and Luigi grab, grab their tools, and. Uh, Daisy smiles. Cue credits. Like but then we jump to, forward to a flat. But then after the credits, we go to a post credit where two where Iggy and Spike are 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 visited by a by a couple of Nintendo executives who want to who want to turn their their exploit who want to turn their exploits into a video game, which they decide <laughs> to call the Super I Koopa. Cut. The uh, post credit scene. I I just described this the post credit scene. Yeah, that is the post credit it. scene. This is one of the first things. I know. I, say, I missed scene. it. I didn't. I didn't watch oh, you it. Know that. Oh yeah, it was an interesting yeah, I scene. Just... I had completely forgotten about it until I saw like this rewatch because I remember that moment happened, but I didn't remember when. And then uh, I just let the movie go on, and it was like, oh wait, that was post credits, wasn't it? I could oh. not tell you if I had ever seen that part before or not. But yeah, anyone who knows my viewing practices knows that I like to let it go down to the yeah, final bit. So I was like, oh, there's a post credit stinger. Isn't that something? <laughs> On the Marvel movies I watch, I show. Yep, so that's the end of the movie. So that's the that's Super Mario Brothers. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I guess we'll go to, uh, you know... <laughs> Go to uh, special. I mean, like uh, special effects. I mean, production design. I mean, production design on this actually was pretty top notch overall. It had a great aesthetic. It had a lot of cool props. It had a lot of interesting effects for the time. Uh, I do think that uh, in a different world, this could have possibly been a success. Uh, because it definitely showed that it had somewhat of a budget behind it. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of a shame that the budget went here, but hey, it was very cool. Well, again, if they had probably had a more unified direction steering the ship, it would have been much more successful. But this was definitely people who were not on the same board page kind of going in the same general direction <laughs> apparently they were rewriting the script daily and most of the actors got to the point where they stopped even reading the scripts the uh directors like zed were barely on speaking terms with anyone else or or each other uh yeah there were a lot of ways this film could have been more successful <laughs> yeah but I did think I did overall like the production design of this movie. I think it was uh, you know, I'll, I'll admit some of the I'll admit some of the CGI has aged is uh, hasn't aged too well. But uh, I think oh yeah, uh, there was I, was it the uh, scene where Hoskins is entering the other dimension the first yes. time? Around? That was pretty weak. <laughs> yeah, or uh, when or when Koopa's melt or when Koopa's melting. <coughs> yeah. Um, but although, although I would say a lot of the dinosaur effects, a lot of the dinosaur and Goomba effects still look good. Yeah, I thought a lot of the anima, animatronics were were okay. I mean, I, I've definitely first, yeah. 
And also, I think I think you know again the soundtrack. I think was I think both Alan Silvestri's score. Like Alan Silvestri is one of my favorite composers. I don't think he gets enough credit compared to like John Williams or Jerry Goldsmith, but he's always got uh, top notch scores. Yeah, and I love the sound. And I think this and the soundtrack is very catchy. I actually do have have it on my iTunes. And um, he's like Williams, and that he's someone you can often, probably more often than not, you can spot him by the score. Like oh, he, absolutely. He does cannibalize himself, but in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> like there are cues, like I'll admit, there are cues in this movie that definitely sound yeah. very, very Back to the Future or very uh, Predator. Um, or like you could tell they were probably they probably they probably did uh, crib crib cues from from past movies. But uh, it's still but still a still still a solid score. Um, and then I guess okay. And then care. Um, I mean, I'm char- characters, right? Yeah. No. Um, and uh, is there any other any other people who want to uh, talk about production? Yeah. Um, uh, Well, um, I thought the production was uh, uh, was pretty good for, uh, for the time. I mean, I, though I didn't grow up with the, uh, the, uh, the f- uh, film, I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, yeah, okay, it, it, it definitely uh, wasn't entirely a Super Mario by the book, by the game adaptation, but... Uh, but I feel like they uh, they uh, when they had John Leguizamo t- uh, take and do the dancing go- uh, Goombas, they they let him have his way away for a moment because nobody was uh, was you know on cue or or what uh, whatnot, and uh, they were like, well, which direction do we want to go? And John Leguizamo was probably like, hey, why don't we just rock them side to side? Let's have fun with this. Uh, so, the uh, the I thought the world was interesting, and the uh, the mm-hmm. dinos were pretty cool. As well. yeah. I mean, that's what I've been saying too. Uh, but this movie is actually better than people give it credit for. It's just everyone's so harshly allergic to it because it's supposed to be a Mario movie instead of what mm-hmm. it actually is. Yeah. I think it does have an over. I think that there are there's a bit too much in the way of hatred towards it, whereas I do think that it isn't nearly as bad as people well make it out to be. But eh, not to say that it's a great movie at any point overall, but it's not a terrible movie. They oh, yeah. definitely do a lot worse. Shall we get into favorite characters favorite and our favorite scenes? Yep. And okay. actually, I was actually before we before we do that, uh, I was I say we maybe we can close out the show with uh, maybe favorite favorite Mario favorite uh, Mario game or favorite uh, video game. Yeah, I could uh, I could actually do that. Um, so I would have said Super Mario World just because of how much time I spent with it when I was younger. Um, because, I mean, it was basically my first game that I owned. Um, but I think I would maybe say Super Mario Sunshine because I went to it into it. Um, well, me and my brother uh, bought our GameCube together. Uh, so we had there were a lot of fights over, you know, whose turn is it to use the machine? And for a while, we only had one game, which was Smash Bros. Melee. And our second game was a... Uh, well, my brother's name's Toby. The second game was a Toby game, which was Super Mario Sunshine, which he really wanted to play. And there were frequently a lot of... There were a lot of moments, because he was... Uh, on, I don't know, maybe, maybe like five or six. Uh, there were a lot of times where he's like, I can't beat this, can you do it? So I would begrudgingly take a crack at some of the more difficult stretches of Super Mario Sunshine. And it grew on me and won me over, like, so strongly after a point. Um, 
at one point, uh, the game disc got lost, and I was actually the one who went out and bought another copy so we could keep playing. So I, I would say Super Mario Sunshine was one of my favorite games in the Mario universe. Well, I would say it is my favorite game in the Mario universe. It also made me thirsty a lot, too. But, <laughs> yeah, that makes that makes sense if you know anything about you know, the game. <laughs> I mean, I do have a lot of good memories with uh, Yoshi Safari, too, and with um, all the Koopa kids and their, like, Gundam robots that you'd have to blow up. <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, quite the time. And, uh, oh, man, I can't believe I forgot about Yoshi's Story, too, which I never owned a copy of, but would frequently borrow slash steal. So I think that's, I think that's probably the best Mario game overall, uh, Yoshi's Story, which is ironic because it's not, <laughs> you're not playing Mario. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, best game with Mario, I would say, is Mario Sunshine. All right. What a ramble. Sorry about that. All right. So, uh, I guess we'll go around to fa and do uh, favorites. Dave, uh, favorite. Like, what about you, Dave? Uh, favorites. Uh, favorite scene, character. What's your favorite Mario game? I would say that the dancing Goombas are my favorite, like all throughout. Uh, for the most part, uh, part and uh, as far as favorite character, I would say Luigi, because uh, he's kind of what uh, what like figured out that the fund uh, fungus was actually like helping them along, even mm -hmm. though he. He was kind of like a bumbling pool. Um, but um, favorite game, I would have to say Super Mario Brothers 3. Good choice. Um, specifically be uh, because every single t uh, time my sister and I play uh, played it, like if you stopped on the same space as the other per uh, person, you could battle it out. And she hated that. <laughs> Um, and, and in order to get out of this like battle, you had to stomp on each other and, and you could actually like gain each other's stars and shit. Uh, shit. Um, but yeah, um, that, uh, that would probably be my, uh, my favorite Mario brothers game. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, what about you? What about uh, you, Brandon? Uh, favorites, favorite character, scene, favorite Mario game. Uh, my uh, favorite uh, scene in this. Uh, I have to agree. When they're in the elevator and they're having them dance, I don't know why that cracks me up. Uh, but uh, as far as favorite game, I mean, if since it was. A considered a game i would say super mario all-stars even though it's kind of uh, cheating but it has uh if you add that plus mario world it has the best games all one package with uh with graphics that are perfectly great um and, uh, and updated music too so exactly so to me that's right there because uh, and if i was to go with because it's of all time, it's it's usually between three and uh, and world. Uh, I vacillate between the two, but if I do uh, all stars, I'm I'm all there. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, over to you, Jake. Uh, favorites, favorite character, scene, uh, favorite Mario game. Huh. that's kind of hard to call on um, all of them. Um, Favorite scene might be ah oh, geez. I'm really not a hundred percent sure what to say for scene. Uh, there were little moments that I enjoyed, maybe some lines here and there. Um, but I'm not really sure with that one. We, if I think of something, I'll say it. Uh, as far as uh, characters, I really do, for all my issues with the movie, I do enjoy these versions of Mario and Luigi. I very much enjoyed this version of Koopa. Um, 
Peach isn't much of a and not Peach Daisy <laughs> isn't as strong of a character as I would like, but they do give her a little bit, and she's like I said incredibly cute. She and Luigi make a really cute couple, which is kind of fun. Uh, so maybe some of their scenes together actually would be some of my favorite scenes. Um, I think most of my favorite scenes would probably be ones where Koopa's being taken down a peg, either by Toad or by Iggy and Spike, like where they keep having these arguments about him being a fascist or a dictator or whatever. I don't know. I enjoy those. Uh, he was very touchy about that. <laughs> um, so, again, no clear winners, but I guess maybe Koopa slightly just because I enjoyed Hopper's performance so much. Uh, as far as the Mario games, again, when we got the SNES, I know Mario World was one of the first that we had, and Mario 3 was another one we played and played and played, and I loved it. Um, but if I had to, to really choose any Mario game, I probably got to go with Mario Kart. <laughs> Wait, which Mario Kart, though? Super Mario Kart or Mario Kart 64? Well, you see, I never really did a whole lot on the 64, so I guess Super Mario Kart okay. probably would be the biggest. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong with Mario Kart. They're always fun to play with. They're always fun to play with a group. Oh yeah. And uh, actually, if we did do the question of like, what's your best video game in a group setting? That is definitely one of the best. That for sure. Uh, Kroll, uh, what about you? Uh, fa favorites, character, scene, favorite Mario game. Kroll? He's dead. Okay, well, uh, we'll go over to you. Over to you. I'm sorry, I am. I, I, I have myself muted. Sorry. Okay. I was talking. <laughs> um, uh, Luigi, and um, as far as scenes go, there's a few I like. All the liners, there's, they're pretty funny. So I'd have to have to mention like all, all those comedy com comedic scenes were, were funny. Um, and, and then of course the dancing boom was, was pretty funny as well. And I do have to mention because nobody mentioned uh, Yo Yoshi trying to uh, eat, eat the eat the evil woman. Yeah. You know, she he he uh, had her foot in his mouth, and you know <laughs> he was trying. It, it was it was just I don't know. It was really cool. You know, he saved saved the princess's butt. And uh, I say maybe yeah. uh, I say maybe Yoshi and Quentin Tarantino could be buddies. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have to go there. And as far as games go, um, I, I have two. Um, I'll definitely, I have to say one. I spent a year on it. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, it was the first one I ever played. I still love it. I, I could play it in my head to this day. Um, like every every single bit of it, you know, just, I play it so much that that it's ingrained in my head. You know, I will never forget that. And uh and, and Super Mario Three. I mean, Three was not hard. Like I said, I beat it in less than a week, and uh, but it was fun. It was it was really fun game to play. And now uh, being the I really you know the raccoon where you got to fly around and, and stuff. It, it was fun. Just it it was just a really fun game. Um, I haven't played All Stars. Was that all the games or something? Uh, and that was uh, all stars was like all the games up to that point. Uh, okay. back, so this was like back in ninety three, back in around ninety four. Yeah, so I haven't really. I played Mario Party once. I think that's like Mario Kart, but other games too. I don't know. Um, I was never really big into those uh, type of games, so um, played them a little. But in uh, some of the other ones you guys mentioned, I never heard of. So um, <laughs> yeah. I, I pretty much stopped as a Super Mario World, so I don't really know much after that for for it. Um, kind of went into PlayStation and went from there. Um, I had a Nintendo, um, which one was it? One with the uh, Ocarina at the time. I had that, but obviously I was into playing the Zelda games, and I don't think I played any Mario games for that. 
But uh, yeah, I loved Mario uh, from the in the in the beginning. You know, all the beginning games. You know, I, I kind of fell out of it, but uh, still uh, great to see Mario around, and you know, his games are still doing good. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't care if he was Chinese or Japanese or whatever the heck it was, that Mario from Donkey Kong is the same Mario. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Uh, Tammy, uh, what about you? Favorites, character scene, favorite Mario game? And if you don't have a, I don't, because you said earlier in the show you didn't really play the games, but uh, if not. Um, no, I played be... Donkey Kong. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll count it. I mean, there I didn't go. really play <laughs> much of the Mario. I couldn't even tell you which one they were playing, the guys, when they were playing it. And, you know, and every time I tried it, it didn't like me very much. So <laughs> um, I just didn't yeah, do My mom would try to, I tried to take my mom out of play, and she jumped on the first one. The way it sounds, it I sounds like she was part of it. The way it sounds to me, the way she describes it, I think it was Super Mario Brothers three, because uh, 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 when she mentioned that, uh, that they were flinging things with tails and stuff, that sounds like Super Mario Brothers three. So, well, they had whatever came out too. I mean, you know, they were up, they were up on it. I remember them saying something about All Stars. I remember that. So. But, you know, like I said, I didn't get into it. You know, when they all some put Donkey Kong in, it'd be like, okay, I'll play. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but my favorite character is, is it Yo Yoshi? Yoshi. Yoshi, the little dinosaur. He's my favorite character. Um, favorite scenes? I really do. I agree with everybody with the dancing, you know, <laughs> with them dancing. That was funny. But I liked it when they were going down the down the, the frozen tubes. That, no, was, that was a fun scene. That was great. You know, and then he kept, you know, he, he put the wrench there, and then they went flipping, and they just <laughs> did it. And then the one ended up on top of the other because they lost their, <laughs> you know, their sled. So those were my favorite scenes. And, of course, anything with Yoshi. <laughs> all right he, very good. he was cute yep. all right very good uh dustin, dustin over to you uh favorites uh i just like everything dennis hopper does as koopa in this like it's i live for it it's great uh hey, my, favorites, my favorites would be the running joke uh with his character especially like I don't, it's, it's kind of a stupid thing to be, like, really excited about, but I laughed so hard with that running, at the payoff for that running joke with the pizza. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> not now. <laughs> Oops. Uh, like, he still wants the pizza, but he's just, like, busy. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I've, I've done that myself a few times where, like, the thing's here, and it's like, I'm doing stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just love... Uh, Everything uh, Hopper brought to that character. And before this movie, I like, really didn't have any personality to speak of. So it was just kind of like, you know, whatever you want. And so that was kind of my first idea of, you know, what this character was like. Oh, I have. Uh, oh, hey, Mo is. Mo is yeah. on. Hey, what's, up? what's going on, Mo? Hey. Not much, man. Just bouncing in here to. Sharing the festivities. Sorry, I'm so late. Uh, yeah, we do, yeah we kind of got through the movie itself, but uh, we'd love to get. Uh, but yeah, we got. We, yeah, we're doing. For, yeah, we're about. We're doing favorites right now, but also, but uh, well, I'm not, well, I can bang it through my. I feel like my first impressions and shit real quick. Uh, yes, Mario was a movie that yeah okay. definitely I rented as a kid. I didn't get to see it in the theater because I was a little fucking kid, you know. Uh, and my parents weren't trying to take me to some Mario movie. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely rented it a bunch. This movie was always a hit to me. I thought it was always exactly what we should have gotten from like a live action realization of Mario. I know a lot of people were like disappointed thinking it should be more, you know, cartoonish and fantastical, but mixing it with Blade Runner was pretty much exactly the right move. Um, 
and that's the reason we're still willing to talk about it to this day. If they made this basically the Captain Lou Albano Mario movie, <laughs> if, it would only be fun to talk about like on Schlockaholics because it's full of cocaine, <laughs> bad decisions, you know. Uh, well, this it's movie, full of alcohol and bad decisions. <laughs> it's full of it, yeah, but not in the same level, not in the same irresponsible right. level that it would have been done uh, if this movie was done otherwise. I think the casting's pretty much perfect, um, yeah, up to and including Dennis Hopper as an insane fucking King Koopa with like badass cornrows that I really wish that I could have arranged for today, but I was not able to. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you tried. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> I legitimately did. Like, I asked my girlfriend if she thought we could pull it off, and she was like, uh, I don't know, man, not in this short of time. So a big secret of mine, um, I actually did have cornrows for a couple months in high school because I was trying to get dreadlocks because I used to really like bands like Corn, and I always wanted dreadlocks like they had, but my hair was the wrong type for it. So the best we, we tried to get it styled, and I ended up getting cornrows not realizing what it would actually look like. And uh, oh my God, I am happy I just tried all Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> You're one of the many white kids that made the ill-informed decision to get braids uh, because of corn. <laughs> I also did the same thing. And I looked like an ass. I had my idiot. tail braided. I looked like a clown. I Dude, okay, I looked like if you braided. made like a rag doll into a clown. You know, <laughs> like my hair was just too short and too straight to fucking like make it look cool. So <laughs> I looked like if you made like a straw clown into like <laughs> a, <laughs> I mean, it just sucked. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I looked like such an idiot. Uh, and I paid that lady so I paid her like 70 bucks to do all my braids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Mario is just fucking amazing. This movie does not get the credit it deserves from people, Hollywood or otherwise, because uh, it's easy to focus on the, you know, production hell stuff that they went through instead of focusing on the fact that they made pretty much the perfect Mario movie. I mean, if you make the, the actual concept of Mario into a live action movie, especially in the 90s, it's just dumb, you know? Uh, nowadays, it makes some sense because they can do these big epic CGI movies. But, mm -hmm. you know, back in the 90s, the Mario movie we got with this is exactly the Mario movie we should have got. You know? uh, so I've always been a huge fan of it, and I love it a lot. Uh, my favorite scenes in it are Yoshi, Dennis Hopper's Cornrows, yeah. and then the dance sequence, you know, with the big black lady. <laughs> the big Bertha. Yeah. Oh, that right. not, not, the not the Coopers in the elevator? <laughs> no, man. That's not what I said. We all like the Coopers in the elevator. They're good, but the dance sequence with the big black lady changed several things for me in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mo's referring to one of the scenes that was clearly aimed at the uh, youthful Disney audience. <laughs> yeah, and she's supposed to be like their version of that big fish that would swallow you whole when you were, you know, so there's a certain like a uh, sexual implication, you know, with that now as I get older and it's like, then the lady perfectly matches up with the. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm not. I have no shame in admitting I like a thicker woman, <laughs> and one that's not afraid to fucking gobble some some something something. You know, or, or, <laughs> or throw old ladies off throw throw old ladies off of uh, high pl off of high platforms. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fuck them. You know, they fucking they had their time. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say that scene with the old lady is one of my favorites. So, I love that scene. So who it's do you scary. think would so uh, win in a fight? The uh, old woman here or the old woman in Legion at the beginning of that movie? Oh, uh, well, I'm going to have to go with the old woman here, actually. That was a movie that did suck. I like how we had to stop and think about it really hard. Well, you know, she'd have to keep the cattle prod, you know, so that she can tackle that woman with her angel powers, <laughs> but, you know. 
of All course, right. both and of them. Also, uh, also, for favorites for this episode, we're also doing favorite Mario game. My favorite Mario game will always be Super Mario World, and that's not because the first three or the yeah. Game Boy Edition. I mean, I've played the Mario series uh, to an extent that most people probably haven't. You know, I mean, it's the Game Boy games are as important to me as the NES games, but Super Mario World was that one that was like endlessly enjoyable you know you could sit there and play it with your friends and like get 98 percent on it or whatever i've had so much fun with that game and my nostalgia for like buying a super nintendo and riding home in the car looking at that super mario world like manual while i was waiting to hook it up for the first time is just so thick you know what i mean that mm -hmm. uh, of course that's always going to be my Good deal. I think to be accurate to this game, it was maybe like the, you know, Mario 3 and all the shit that came along with it on Game Boy, you know. The Game Boy games don't get enough of their own love. Like, that That whole series was pretty fucking great. You know, six golden coins and all that stuff. I mean, a lot of people, Mario fans included, kind of forget about the Game Boy era. But it was something that existed oh yeah i haven't played him oh, that, was another, that was another thing we knew incidentally like we would go i know you guys probably remember what was it was it was it kb toys i think it was kb that had like the the the, the kiosk where you could go in and play the video games toys or us Oh, KB Toys, Toy Toys, Toys R Us, uh, Walmart yeah, even had that back in the yeah. day. Uh, and I remember I so that, was that was probably my primary first-hand exposure to Game Boys, because we didn't have them. And again, my friends, I think we were doing more like the actual consoles, but I did like going into the stores and playing yeah. on the little Game Boy for an hour or so. Also, also Funko, Funko Land did it too. Uh, if you guys, yeah. That place. yeah, and it could change your whole experience with something. Like, I remember when Ocarina of Time, the Legend of Zelda game came out, I was like mad skeptical about it. But then I heard the, the song mm -hmm. one day at Walmart, that siren song, you know, and then I went over to the kiosk and it was <laughs> like a demo of Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, yeah, nice. And you play it for a few minutes and you're like, all right, I have to own it, you know. Yeah, which was like back then, like a sixty-five dollar purchase, <laughs> sixty-five seventy bucks for Legends of Zelda. Uh, they didn't have a standardized price for video games wow. back then, so it wasn't like just the you know you had to pay sometimes seventy-five, seventy, seventy-five bucks. On the other the hand, you could buy a game now? and be done with it. <laughs> yeah. Some things were really yeah. erratic. Like, yeah. I mean, I remember. Oh, uh, well, they were complete the experiences days. back then. I remember one Christmas, uh, I wanted this uh, the Power Ranger game, and Dad had to. It was hard to find in stores. Like, we actually had to get it from like the Sears catalog, and I remember it being ninety five dollars. What? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's the only. Actually, I feel like that's the one thing that's been consistent that. Wow. Uh, Despite all the all this inflation and price, prices going up over the last few decades, video game prices have been pretty consistent. They found a good middle ground, is what they did. And where well, again, it, you, the game prices are consistent, but then you got all the freaking DLC, so it's kind yeah. of DLC microtransactions, yeah. all the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't really mind <laughs> so much, except when it comes to they have an alternate version. Fast. <laughs> uh, either way, the uh, yeah, definitely something that factored into my purchase of certain stuff. And I don't know. I think the Mario series has been readily available to people throughout history. You know, I mean, like yeah. no matter what Nintendo console you have, you can play the previous three, which is pretty cool. Um, Mario Galaxy, if you're an old school Mario fan or a new school Mario mm -hmm. fan, that's pretty much the best game you could ever ask for. I still haven't 100%ed it, but 
you know, all that stuff aside, the Mario movie is a huge part of nostalgia for me. I think it's one of the most like underrated sort of adaptations of things. Because it's easy for people to hate on it because they end up learning about like the production hell that it went through or something like that. But what about the actual movie? It, it's pretty fucking sweet, you know? Yeah. You know, one other game I got to cite, if only because one of the um, trivia bits I saw was that this was like the last Nintendo sanctioned American film. I think it was the only Until one, I yeah. think it was no, well, Detective well, Pikachu, Pikachu got their yeah. sanction. And and that was actually a pretty good movie. But one of the movies, one of the games that I have immense nostalgia for from my college days when we would play it on the big TV in the dorm room was Super Smash Brothers. And that of course brought together those two franchises into one little yep. fun uh I loved playing Pikachu in that game. <laughs> It's wild that we haven't got like some Toy Story style series about the Smash Brothers characters, you know? Right. Oh, that's not, that's something I, I don't think we touched on either. Like at some point, uh, Koopa became got a, got named Bowser. I wonder if he was always Bowser or like they just um, updated him when they updated Princess Peach's name. Huh, it's I, mean, possible. No, I, mean, I mean, I think because I know he's because he's Bowser. I mean. I think his name was changed to Bowser, like before, before long before the N sixty four. He was going by Bowser before the N. I think it was like definitely by at least by the time Super Mario Brothers three came out. I was gonna say at least by Mario World, I'm sure, but yeah, maybe Mario. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. the, definitely, I would so definitely like the late eighties, early nineties. Uh, he started going by Bowser. Hmm. He, he was Bowser in, in the first one. Okay. Nah, I I don't know if he was actually anything in the first couple because yeah, he's remember, just yeah. the last dragon boss. You know? uh, the yeah, the problem was, was, was not was a Bowser name for him. He, that's what you knew him as later, but I don't think that there was oh. an actual name for him at the point when the games came out, you know. One one last thing I want to say, and then I guess we'll probably wrap it up pretty soon. But oh, the, I, got uh, I still got I still got to do my favorites. Right. <laughs> but I'm not sure how many of y'all seen Press Start. Hopefully, we'll get to it eventually on here. That had some great Mario uh, associations. <laughs> but I I was watching this and I was like, I feel like the actor playing Count Vile probably saw this movie and was basing his performance partly on Koopa. I, I think he probably was. And and which just makes that one all that much more fun for me. All right. And uh for me I'm gonna say favorite. So for me favorites, uh favorite favorite character, Mario. I mean for me this is Bob Hoskins most for me this is most Bob Hoskins most iconic role after Eddie Valiant. Um, uh, but I also enjoyed Dennis, uh, John Leguizamo and Dennis Hopper as Luigi and Coop and King Koopa. Uh, they both have, I definitely think Dennis Hopper had a lot of fun. I mean, lot, we all had this up, but he he definitely gives, definitely gives his, his all as King Koopa and, uh, and John Leguizamo. I mean, this was my first introduction. This was my introduction to him and I kind of became a fan for him since this movie. Um, Favorite scenes? Okay, so I had a lot of quite a lot of favorite, quite a few favorite moments, like smaller moments. But um, I mean, I agree with everybody else. The dancing Goombas, um, all, but also um, seeing the police when when Mario and Luigi are first when uh, so when Mario and Luigi are arrested and Mario's 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 like, I can't believe this! I'm getting arrested for being a plumber. Um. That uh, and then also um, when they when they when they're getting checked into the police station, and uh, Luigi tells the and Luigi tells the police officer that there's that there's three Mario's among the two of them, Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Um, and then favorite game I have to agree with with, with a lot of you guys. Uh, Super Mario World for me that was, I mean that was one of the first game that was the first game I got on the Super Nintendo. Uh, well, with Super Mario All Stars, and and that game is just perfection. Um, 
and it's very perfect. It's perfect. It's infl- It's and it's infinitely playable. And uh, that's all I got. And I don't know if we've explicitly stated we might, we talked about Alan Silvestri's score. They do check the original game score in here at a couple of points too, and at the that is the movie. That is one of the more iconic video game scores. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't oh, yeah. hold a candle to Tetris, but it's still pretty darn good. Okay. Um, and I believe on that note, uh, we are finished with our discussion. So um, hopefully you ladies and gentlemen out there uh, uh, have enjoyed our talk on the Super Mario Brothers movie and uh, uh, did Brandon want to tell, uh, tell the audience ex- exactly or, uh, or did, uh, did we want to go through our art uh, outros or did you want to tell oh, what we have can, next week? I can go ahead and let everybody know what we're doing next week. Uh, we are heading into uh, a different type of uh, movie next week uh, a british comedy uh called monty python and the holy grail yeah i've never uh, seen that oh well worth really? a watch one of my favorite comedies i'd say well within the top 10 of my comedy of uh, favorite comedies of all time Indeed. Uh, <laughs> uh, and of course unfortunately i'll get to host it so uh it'll be uh, uh interesting all the way around <laughs> now for something completely different <laughs> indeed <laughs> All righty. Did we want to go through our outros then? Uh, so, uh, Dustin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, uh, I'm the Crypto Horrors on YouTube and Instagram. I collect horror movie stuff, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I had meant to kind of revive my channel after a bit of an off-on like hiatus kind of thing, but uh, I'm kind of doing a lot of severe emotional issues uh to put it kindly this year and so i've been making uploads i just haven't been having them go live so when i finally have some time to like sit down and breathe uh i can uh, make some things go live uh, i did some cool stuff like there was a halloween ends mini collection where i reviewed like the mask uh the novelization and the steel book of the movie and I did another one of those for The Wicker Man, which I'm hoping to have go live relatively soon. Uh, I should probably do all that tomorrow. Um, but, um, you know, I, I know most of last year I was saying, oh, I'm re- making stuff for the channel. Oh, I'm coming back. Um, but this time I am actually filming stuff. So it's a start. Uh, so go to The Crypt of Horrors if you want to see uh, any of that. And uh, you can also find me on Twitter as Dirk Kripaxis. Uh, I'd like to make Kripaxis my just kind of brand name everywhere because it's a lot easier than the Crypto Horrors. But um, I'm doing some transitioning kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, that's uh, what you can find where you can find me and my content. Uh, I've also been doing a thing where I'm trying to watch one movie every day for the whole year. Uh, so far, uh, actually going pretty good. So I might even get the giant pile of unwatched movies off my table by the summer. So, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Very cool. Uh, Brandon, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Um, Septum Ascend, Septum Sin versus the world. Uh, we're kind of on a hiatus. We still are doing our pickup videos and occasional. I think this week we've got a, uh, I've got a pickup and I've got a, first impressions um i do plan on um also uh getting um uh, actually about two first impressions up this week as i work on our next uh psychoanalysis which is going to be fun but uh we've got some stuff planned in the future uh, we've got a good anime one at the end of the month and of course if you like voltron uh we we had a discussion about that not too long ago <laughs> okay. and even if you don't like voltron yeah uh forrest did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do all right uh my name is forrest bennett i'm an independent film producer actor and actor based in long island new york um i've got a movie coming uh a movie coming out uh camp blood 666 part two 
Uh, it's the, I believe, uh, it's the latest entry in the Camp Blood franchise. Uh, also, uh, in I'm also in Troma's Bring on the Dam, which is coming, which should be coming out, coming out soon. Uh, and uh, you can also find me on Instagram, Instagram under my name is not Gump, where I do comic book pickups. Uh, and also, I'm also on a show here in New York called Unger the Radar, where we review and discuss newer movies and TV shows. I've always got something going on in the pipeline. Very cool. Heading over to you, uh, Crow. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, I know. I was on a different page. Uh, um, well, I'm a uh, Crow AK Ron, uh, disabled, so I don't work. And uh, but I uh, watch a lot of movies, TV shows, read books, um, keep myself busy, uh, play games on uh, my phones and um, video game systems. I uh, also come on to the podcast here uh, and uh, on Sunday with the grandeur. I'm also on the anime discussion once a month, and I pop here and there on another podcast. I don't have my own YouTube, but I'm on everyone else's, so uh, look around. You'll see me around, and get to hear my lovely views on everything. <laughs> and uh, listen, you, can, you can come on Sunday and listen to me and uh, Dave squabble, uh, squabble like two, uh, two birds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, heading over to uh, Jake, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? All right, I'm kind of Bookie Jake. I'm the co-host of Septum Sim vs. World. Uh, well, as Brandon mentioned, um, we did just do a talk on Voltron. We have, this being my birthday month, at the end of the month, we'll be doing a fun little largely forgotten anime about the unvampire Karin. Uh, and... It will be, uh, like I said, a good, good time. And um, we, yeah, like I said, not a whole heck of a lot going on right now. I am I am pretty much flat broke right now, so I am not adding to the pile, except for my birthday pickups, which uh, I got a big one this week. And uh, tune into the video to check it out. Uh, but I will... I wasn't even thinking about that movie when I put in my submissions for March, but I, it will that movie will be suggested repeatedly bef- between now and the end of the year. I can guarantee, uh, <laughs> unless it gets picked right away. Um, and anyway, the uh, <clears throat> unfortunately do not have the option of watching. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. But I did just come off a week of quarantine where I got a few movies and a couple of, I got caught up on a couple of TV shows. So uh, I got some viewing in. Um, But now it's back to the old grind. Uh, I work uh, full time in the local library system and also am co founder of RVA Homegrown Natives, a native plant nursery here in central Virginia. And uh, so keep pretty busy, but I do like to take time to watch stuff. To uh, We had a little family movie night watching this one last night, and um, I'm not sure everyone was as happy with the outcome, uh, but I, I was glad to see it again. And um, like I said, I like coming on with these fine folks and just uh, shooting the shit a while about movies. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, heading over to you, Tammy. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Um, I'm David's fiance. I go on this channel and another and talk about movies, and I collect my own and just like hearing what everybody else has to say and checking out things that maybe I haven't seen. Okay, and my name is David Streggy. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore. Uh, Uh, Thank you for coming along with us on this uh, uh, pleasant journey that we've had uh, talking about uh, video games and Mario Brothers. (laughs) So, um, uh, but um, I also moonlight under a different channel called Delusions of Grandeur, where we also podcast on Sundays, uh, do so with Crow and Tammy and and Boris, and and we have a lot of fun uh, talking about movies of all genres and uh, 
uh, I believe we're going to be uh, talking about Stage Bright this coming uh, Sunday. So check that out uh, once it. Which Stage uh, Bright? Uh, the one from the uh, 80s. Uh, the one with the. Uh, with the owl? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just saw it a couple of weeks ago. It's pretty sick. I love it. But uh, yeah. Um, also, I'm um, putting together an anthology, which I'm starting up uh, uh, putting together the next segment, at least for the um, main stories uh, 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 this week. So, uh, so hopefully I'll get that uh, in the can and uh, uh, work my way forward to, uh, to at least uh, uh, getting around to a couple of short films that I'll be adding to uh, the, the mix. So, uh uh, but uh, Moonlight Under uh, Delusion is a grand uh, uh, door, but I also do video pickups and video reviews, so check out the channel, check out this channel, like, share, and subscribe, and hopefully y'all have a good evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you are. Um, let us know down in the comments what you thought of our discussion, and we'll see you next week. Everyone say good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.